All right. Hello, Fortinos, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is March 27th, 2023. Oh, man, how close are we now? What are we in our countdown? In our countdown, we have our brother Neil doing it on the forum for us. Our countdown, where are we? The 27th of March. And yes, brothers and sisters, we believe the highly probable highest of all watch dates is true resurrection this year at the 7th of April, which is Nisan or the first month, 16th day, depending where you are on the earth. We've explained many reasons why. We've broken down many reasons for understanding it. And one of the biggest things is, of course, the 70th year of Israel, the ability to understand the 70th of Israel. We've broken that down many times. And finally, we are here. We've had so many incredible, incredible revelations. All glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by the power of his spirit in the will of the Father to open up his book in the revelation of his is to come. You know, we take a beating, man. I'll tell you what, I, I, I get beat up every day by YouTube channels, uh, by other Christians, as I know many of you guys do as well. But that, has that ever distracted us? Has that ever deterred us? Heck no. Because why? Because once you see it for yourselves, you can never, ever, ever unsee it. It is so mind-blowing, these things that have caused confusion for centuries to come into clarity. And we've done it in hundreds of places. People that have had confusion and why does one gospel say this and the other gospel say that? It's not just perspective. It's literally different words being said about the same event. How could that be? Well, we have those answers and so much more here revealed in this ministry. And today we've had a number, I've had again, a number of people ask me to do another detailed video of this because it's been a while since I've done it. and. It's, it's, this title is, of this video is probably just a big number 50. And then I've got in brackets probably something like wedding, white horse, rider, holy ghost, something along those lines. Well, that's what we're going to cover today. We are going to go into the detail of the 50 days that will begin at all. Where will these 50 days begin? Right here, right here at the Feast of first fruits. We're going to break down some of the understanding and it ends at true Shavuot, which is the 50th day and the start of a Pentecost count. But that's for another story. We will, however, touch on that as, as we go throughout as well to explain what the difference is and how we came to understand it. But this is going to be to lay out just a ton of detail of, of an overview of the research that was done to, to understand what got us to this point. Because many of you, especially if you're new or if you're newer, you will have heard some of these things. But if you're new and you're hearing this for the first time, you're going to hear things like 50 days before the 14 years of tribulation and then the 50th jubilee. And you're going to say, what on earth is this guy talking about? All right. So I'm going to show you in this playlist the place to go, but I want you guys to know I'm going to break this down and we're going to just kind of overview, remind ourselves these things that we've gone through, these things that we've looked at and where we have actual 50 day counts within the scriptures for this. All right. We're going to show how we went through them and how some of them are automatically eliminated. One in particular that we were really looking at is automatically eliminated because we know something very important. The Lord God is counting from Taurus. The Lord God counts from the Feast of Weeks. And now we can understand the Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks is seven Sabbaths from the Feast of First Fruits. That is correct. It absolutely is from the sheaf of the wave offering. It is seven Sabbaths counted from that point. 
seven Sabbaths, and then you begin to number 50 days. But that first day is also the 50th day, but it's also the first day of 50 days to Pentecost. That 50 days to Pentecost is not part of the pre-trib, even though that what you're going to see in this conversation, you're going to see a conversation that you're going to say, well, wait a second, isn't that that count? But what you're going to see also is that in the end, what was first will be last, the last will be first. All right. And we're going to break all this down. I'm going to lay out the events that, that we have understood are going to take place first. We know that the 50 days, the pre-trib will take place at the beginning of the 50 days. It'll be followed by the first tack in the land of Israel. It'll be in northern Israel. There will be the seven-day wedding after the escape during the first seven days. During this time, and maybe even just before the 50 days starts, but for sure during that first week, there's going to be a stone's throw, a meteor of some sort that's going to be seen coming and won't hit until after the escape has taken place. When the seven-day wedding is over and these events have begun and taken place, the Son of Man is coming. He's not going to proclaim himself, Christ, and all that. He's going to come. He's going to be as the Son of Man. He's going to be warning. He's going to be doing miracles. And yes, he's going to be here for 40 days. <clears throat> When he comes to start those 40 days on the eighth day, he's going to have another meal. This is going to be a banquet meal with his seals worker group, which is a portion that we call the remnant bride workers. After that, he's here for 40 days, warning Jerusalem and probably the world, but warning Jerusalem that they're about to be compassed about and destroyed. When his 40 days are over, there's three days left. This group is going to go meet the apostles that will be anointed on day one of the 50 as well as after the escape. This, anoint, this group that's going to work seals during the time while the apostles are there, this remnant bride group is going to go meet them somewhere, wherever the Lord deems it, wherever he leads them. And there they will receive what we call the Acts 2.0 Holy Ghost anointing. Now you're going to say, well, isn't that Pentecost? Yes, it's a Pentecost, but when you understand that everything goes in reverse, meaning it's the 50 to Pentecost, then seven and seven, like the like a feast of weeks count, but it's a year's, you'll you'll be able to see that. And so once that anointing of the Holy Ghost takes place on that 50th day, then they will go out from Jerusalem, the workers will throughout the earth, and Jerusalem will be attacked at the second attack. They will be destroyed. They will flee throughout the lands. Many will be taken captive. Many will be killed. And many will flee into the mountains. That will begin the 14 years of tribulation at the Red Horse Rider and the 14 years, seven of seals, excuse me, and seven of trumpets. All right. That's the overview of exactly what we're going to break down. And not just here it is, here it is, here it is, but the understanding of the revelation of it. All right. So these are the types of things we're going to go into. And as we get going, or I should say, as we continue, I want to say thank you to everybody. Give you guys a shout out. Check this out. Um, I had told you guys, uh, you know, we put out the request so that we can get some books printed and done over in Uganda. Well, we my my shout out was for 50 books to hope to be able to raise enough to get 50 books of our ministry revealed end times revealed like never before. Well, we put the call out for 50 and it looks like we're going to he's going to be able to print well over 200, maybe even to 300 books. How crazy is that? Look at that. They got a printer all these stacks, guys. You have to under, you have to understand something. The book is 280 something pages. It's awesome these guys were able to do that. Look at this. So it looks like a printed book, but if you look close up here, it's not, right? So they trim the cover and they trim the pages from an eight and a half by 11. And they actually had full color uh, covers put over it, wrapped over, like I think there's plastic coils that are behind it. And they just trim down all the pages. How awesome is that, man? I am so excited by this. 
The word is spreading. This is our brother Steve, uh, who runs the ministry there in Uganda, spreading the word, and now is going to be teaching this to pastors in the area uh, it, as part of the ministry to add on to it, to have people ready and watching for the time of the end, to be ready, to be diligent in the Lord, to be repentant. You see, one thing he despises there, like we all do, even where we live, is it's all prosperity. Maybe not all, but it is so much prosperity where he is that these people never want to talk about it. Over in that part of the world, they just don't want to talk about prophecy because they want to talk about prosperity, right? Well, our brother Steve is about all truth and he teaches the word, salvation. They, they, uh, um, they, they feed the poor, they give blankets, they clothe them, they give medicines. They preach their salvation. They help the kids. They print kids' books. And now they're adding the revelation of prophecy to the list so that they will be prepared for the time of the end that's at hand. Man, I am just so blown away. I, I thank you, Steve. I thank everybody who has supported us. If anybody still would like to support us in the little time that's left, it's, yeah, we've got well over the 50 books we were looking for. But we could literally do thousands, time permitting. So if you wanted to support still, you could support here. But your prayers, your, your intercessions, your support, all of it counts. And we are grateful for all of it. Uh, it just, it blows me away. God is good, man. So with that, let's, uh, let's start going into this. So, and, and as you guys know, before I really get going into all of it, um, you're going to hear me sometimes talking about the forum. You can click here on the website or you can go to ministryrevealed.com or you can find the links and all the other links that we share uh, under the video in the description box under all these videos. But you can go to the website and you can join us there in the forum. It's free. It'll take you a few seconds to sign up. Everything on the website is free. Everything in the forum is free. The book is even free if you want to get the book. It's available on PDF. It's available in, in five languages. You can go to Amazon if you want the paperback. Of, of course, you have to pay on Amazon for that. It costs us too. But don't worry about it. You don't have to have that. You can read the book from the website. You can, uh, uh, you can download the paperback. Uh, uh, sorry, the, um, the uh, PDF. See, I even show you guys. I go from the PDF all the time. <laughs> so I got my own book. Why would I crack it open when I'm sharing everything online all the time, right? So you guys can always read it that way too. But everything is free. And in the on the website, you can join us in the forum. Like I said, it'll take a few seconds. There's 1,100, 1,200 people close to there. Um, all throughout the world, brothers and sisters diligently seeking the Lord, praying for each other, sharing, strengthening, all sorts of things, all right? So if you'd like to be with like-minded brothers and sisters and ask questions and share, you can come and join us there as well. And so for anybody else that's new, I always bring you guys to this playlist. If you're new or newer and you haven't yet seen these key videos in this playlist, it's a must. You help to live Even if you just started with these three videos. So chapter one of the book is more detailed than this intro, 30 minute Bible study. Chapter two of the book is in greater detail than this 30 minute Bible study. These two right here are, are the beginning of all the revelation. In fact, it starts with this one right here, which I've called Who the Gospels Are Speaking to. It's a 30-minute Bible study revelation of being able to finally discern and see from Scripture for yourselves who the Gospels are speaking to. You're going to see that the synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke in the end of days are Luke, Mark, and Matthew. You see? That's why I said it at the beginning. The first will be last, the last will be first. You're going to see there's, there was a reason why when Christ was going to the cross in, in, Mark, uh, in Luke, he was arrayed in a gorgeous robe, which means white, radiant, beautiful. In Mark, he was arrayed in purple, and in Matthew, he was arrayed in scarlet. Well, how did this happen? They weren't colorblind, so something else was going on. And what you're going to find out is things like this are all throughout the Gospels, not just the discourses. And these, these clues are all prophecy. Dozens and dozens and dozens of places throughout the Gospels are filled with prophecy for the is to come. You see, 
what was Old Testament shall be. What is New Testament shall be. So what was shall be and what is shall be. Which means at the moment of the pre-trib escape, the is is over and the shall be has begun. And what played out in the was and what's played out in the is will all be typologies in what will play out in the 14 years in the is to come. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. You see, what are the two colors of tribulation, right? With the, scar with the beast, purple and scarlet. What does a bride wear? White. Luke is to the bride of Christ. Mark is to the world, the house of Israel that is grafted in. The Gentiles are grafted in, which is the sleeping church. Those that proclaim Christ, but they don't, they're not seeking him. They're not diligent. They're not repentant. They're, they're just not prepared. They're going to have to go through seals and see if they can endure seals and really come close to the Lord, which we know will happen because it's going to be the greatest revival in human history, especially during the first, you know, about two and a half years of seals during World War III. So these are the things that you're going to come to understand. And Matthew is written to the Jews, you see, and this is where the problem has come. So what's happened is they haven't realized that there's not one seven years, but two, because everybody has been taught and focused from the gospel of Matthew. And if everything you've been taught, and for hundreds of years it's been taught this way, then everything of your perspective, unbeknownst to you, has a perspective from the eyes of Judah. Because the seven years of trumpets are to Judah. You see, the church had that one right. Unfortunately, just like the Jews who missed Christ coming the first time, the church is going to miss Christ coming this time. But they're going to be okay. Because what you're also going to find out is that pre, mid, and post, and those debates that people have all the time, they're true. All three of them are true. Pre-trib is Luke group. Mid-trib is Mark's group. Post-trib is Matthew's group. And you're going to see a glimpse of that as we get started into this today. And what it reveals is that the end of days is 14 years. There's a reason for the difference of Luke's discourse being so different than Mark's and Matthew's. Mark's is even different than Matthew's. And what most people forget is Matthew's isn't just chapter 24, it goes right into chapter 25 as well. You see, there's a reason to those differences. And as you begin to understand all this and understand that it's all because of Matthew, that's why we've only seen seven years. That's why people confuse everything in their pre-trib belief. They believe everything they see in scripture that has a hint of anything that seems like a rapture, they believe it's all applied to them but they're, they're not understanding the details of the wording around it, and they can't because then it would mess up their pre-trib. You know, you'll even see that when you go to Matthew's discourse, you know, immediately after the tribulation of those days, and it's talking about the coming of the Son of Man. You see, I just saw Perry Stone in a video just recently. I watched a clip of it, and he was talking about the, in Matthew 24, at the coming of the Son of Man, nobody knows the day or hour in Matthew 24. And they'll take that. And he took it. And he believes that one will be taken and one will be left. He thought that was talking about pre-trib. It's not. Matthew 24 said immediately after the tribulation of those days and when they see him coming. And it's all about his coming at the end in the, in the 14th year of trumpets or that end of the seventh year of trumpets. You see? But that type of thing they, they just have to speak it away because they've never understood the revelation of who the gospels are speaking to this is how powerful these three are and these two are just an intro and the book will give you even greater detail and so will many other videos here in the ministry here's a short video we did on the 40 days of the son of man in the past i'm going to elaborate on all of this because the 40 days of the son of man are within the 50 days that we're about to talk about. You're going to see that pre, mid, and post are all true. And you can also come down to the 11th video. Once you begin to understand the first ones there that I mentioned, 
you'll finally be able to see the revealed discourses understood of Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Luke's portion is that 40, 50 days before the 14 years begin at nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, which is the beginning of Mark's discourse. All right, so that's the stuff you're gonna begin to understand here in this intro series. And I promise you, it'll be worth every moment of your time that you take in it. I promise you, study it, seek it, and it's going to blow your mind. Well, I gotta say that was pretty good timing. I had just paused it for a moment because my propane, you can see it's still minus seven in Calgary. Come on, it's spring. My propane had just gone out right in the last two minutes, finishing up that intro piece. And I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Perfect timing because I wouldn't have wanted to have been in mid stride and have to change out that tank. Anyways, perfect. We're all set and ready to go. No worries about freezing now. So let's get going into this, guys, because this is so exciting. You see, where we're going to start with is, is the beginning of this understanding because how it started here in the ministry was back on September 8th, 2017. And it started with a, a sudden realization from, from Revelation chapter 12 and Isaiah 66 to Luke chapter 21. And I had caught something and I said, wait a second. And that's where it all began. I said, if something comes from this, I'll let you guys know. And oh my goodness, it's been five and a half years of continuous revelation from it. And it started with the revelation of who the Gospels were speaking to. And, and as that developed over the first two, three, four weeks or so, you started to realize, well, wait a second. Then that means if these Gospels are really talking to three different groups of people in the end of days, you see, that's what you're going to understand. If you take this whole screen that you're looking at and you take the, the way the Lord God works his harvest and you take 10% of the field. That's the pre-trib group, the 10%. Okay, the 10% of the church, ready, watching, diligent, in the Lord, seeking him. I believe that number is gonna be 144 million people, just under 2% of the population of the world. And that's the pre-trib group, of which that remnant bride, I believe it'll be 24,000. It might be more, but I believe it'll be 24,000 that will remain to work during the time of seals. <clears throat> of course, they will make disciples from them as well and so forth. But then at the rapture, the Mark group rapture of the great multitude that happens in the seventh year of seals, you've got all the rest of the field. That's called the main harvest. And the main harvest is, you know, out of the 90% that's left of the field, it's about what, 80, 85% somewhere in there. That is the great multitude rapture. Then you have the corners, okay, the four corners and the gleanings, which are the, the, the parts that fall in the ground along the way. That is the final five, ten percent, whatever it is at the end, or five, six, seven, eight percent, whatever it is at the end. Okay? It's called first fruits, main harvest, corners and gleaning. That is the overall picture of Luke, the pre-trib bride of Christ in Christ, spirit-filled, going first. The main harvest is the mark group, the great multitude rapture. Those who will go through the seals will wake up, will endure the persecution because they will now know, they will understand. There will be places of refuge, but some will also be killed along the way, but they will endure seals. And it'll be the great multitude rapture in the seventh year of seals. And that is the main harvest. The majority of the billion, 1.2 billion and change people coming in during the great multitude rapture, I still believe the vast more majority of them will be alive. Definitely, we know from scripture, the majority will still be alive, although probably even a couple few hundred million will have been killed along the way. All right. And then you've got the corners and gleaning, and that is Judah's portion. It is Luke, Mark, Matthew. It is spirit-filled in Christ. It is those that were, you know, kind of in Christ, not quite like the first group. And then you've got the third group that he comes to when he returns feet down on the Mount, Mount of Olives. It's a taking, a taking, a return. All right? And 
when all of this had started, when all of this came to be in the Gospels, and I realized, oh my goodness, if all of these discourses are speaking to different people for different po at different portions of time, then how is this all going to fit, right? Many people have had those questions over the years. How on earth is everything we're told about tribulation going to fit in seven years? Well, the answer is, it's not. And where that started to first be revealed to me after the Gospels, about a month or so in, a few weeks or maybe a month, month and a half in, something like that, I came across this scripture right here. And this began the revelation. And all the way since then, over five years with the Gospels, they were the two key components, but it was the Gospels first. You see this? This of course, yes, it's Paul. Yes, it was Paul when he was taken and his visitations and so forth. Yes, but we also know Paul is a type of Christ and we know prophecy is all throughout Scripture. But you must have the understanding of end of times to be able to discern it. Nobody comes to teach on this, yet it talks about rapture right there. Could you imagine everybody talking about seven year tribulation? It's seven years, seven years, seven years. The whole world says seven years. Tell them to go read First Corinthians, uh, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 12. Listen to this. Second Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse two. I knew a man in Christ. Okay. Those who are in Christ are spirit filled. So I knew a man in Christ above. That's what we're going to focus on today above 14 years ago. What? Above 14 years ago? And what happens in this typology of them? It's like a rapture. So such an one means like a harpazo. So it's like a rapture. It's not going to be the same as the rapture, but it's going to be something similar to it. And how do you know? How do you know they're being taken? Well, they go to the third heaven. Pretty wild, right? Look at the second one. And I knew such a man, so not in Christ like this first one, but kind of like the first one. And it says how that he was caught up. This one is the great multitude rapture. This is the was caught up that you read about in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. And where does this one go? To paradise. You see, the third heaven and paradise are both a part of the kingdom of God. They're in different portions, right? So there'll be those in the third heaven portion, right? And those in the paradise portion. They are both in the kingdom of God. But it all starts above 14 years ago. You see, if 14 years, if the above was more than a year, it would have said 15, but it didn't. So the mystery when I first started looking into this was to figure out what this above was as I began to really understand the 14 years. And ever since, we've been able to go all the way back to creation and just blow our minds with the revelations that have come from it. Well, look at this. Here's Paul now as a typology coming the third time. Look at what he says. You come down to verse 13 and it says, for what is it wherein you were inferior to other churches, except it be that I myself was not burdensome to you. Forgive me for this wrong. Listen to this. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you. I will not be burdensome to you, for I seek not yours but you. For the children ought not lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. You see, the Jews as the parents, they knew throughout history, right? There is chosen people. The, it's the Gentiles that were just the dope de do right? That's what it was. We believed on him. We have faith. Where did it all begin? Above 14 years ago, a caught away, a caught away, and a coming. You see? Pre-trib, mid-trib. Both go to the kingdom of God. Both were a taking away. And the third one, he came to them. Pre, mid, and post are all revealed right here. It's not even a mystery. Yet try and get any other seven-year teacher or, or YouTuber or anybody out there to read this with an open mind when they know for a fact they'll tell you that this is the rapture. 
because it's the same one from Revelation chapter 12, verse 5. You see? This isn't what we're talking about today, though. We're talking about this above. What is this above? And what were we digging into? What have we dug into to, to bring about the revelation of it over the last several years, actually, right? So let's go into this. For a while now, we had been understanding that this count was a 50-day count. You see, for the longest time, what this above was, 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 really, was really bothersome, okay? Because we know the first group going to the third heaven is above 14 years. And it took a while to figure out. But as you go through and as the studies continued and, and it got deeper and deeper and deeper into these things, we realized that there was, there was this connection to an attack and an attack. Okay, that there was a pre-trib escape, there was an attack, there, there, there was the Holy Ghost anointing at the end of 50 days, there, there was a second attack that caused Jerusalem to be destroyed and for them to flee. You see, that's why this set first seven years is so important. The world has no idea it's coming. The first seven years, Jerusalem is going to be destroyed and removed from the land. Everybody thinks they're about to rebuild, that God is going to save them in the land and they're going to start rebuilding the temple. It's just not true. It's just not true. The land they have defiled with disobedience. He is not going to allow them to rebuild it. All right. It must take its rest for seven years before he can build the temple. It's right there in Leviticus for us. It's in Leviticus 26, okay? And in those seven years, while they're removed and they're scattered, it will turn to the seven years to the church, which is to the world, essentially. And that's why it's World War III, Antichrist, Mark of the Beast, all that stuff to the end of seals, okay? And so as this progressed, you know, I knew, of course, it had to be less than 15 years because... Otherwise, it would have said 15. So there's something that this above had to represent. And understanding as we studied that, that it became more and more clear as the months continued to pass by and we kept seeking out and searching these things, it became crystal clear. And now it's not even a question. In fact, it's so not a question. It was the one thing the Holy Ghost confirmed to us. How powerful is that? One thing. Now, you could say, yes, well, the Holy Spirit has been leading us in this ministry ever since the beginning. Absolutely 100% true. <laughs> I, I'm just some dude in his, in his garage up in freezing Canada. I don't know how this happened to me. I can't explain it, but I can prove it. I can prove it. These are mysteries that were hidden from the creation, from the foundations of the earth. That's how powerful it is. And... It's so easy to get excited if you love the Lord and you've been seeking and you've been confused and, and discouraged because you couldn't understand, then you're in the right place. That's how powerful it is. That's why I say those videos at the beginning of every video because they are so important to understand. Your mind will explode with revelation. And so, you see, it's <laughs> it, the Holy Ghost uh, in March of 2020 I had done this video that was the revelation of the 50 days, then the 14 years, and then the 50th Jubilee. It was revealed by, by, new, uh, by uh, 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 Numbers chapter 13, and it was about Hosea, and, and Moses changes his name to Yeshua, and Osi, or Hosea, his name means deliverer, and of course, it's a typology of Jesus as well. Moses changes his name and his father, his name, the name of his father was Noon. And Noon means perpetuity. Well, I remembered hearing in the Hebrew or reading in the Hebrew alphabet that the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Noon. And the 14th letter, which is Noon, is represented in the Hebrew count in their numbers as 50. And I said, oh, my goodness. 50, 14, and then it's the final 50th Jubilee. So you got a 50-day count of 14 years, 
And when those 14 years are over, what are those 14 years? They're the last two sevens of Shemitah year, 49 year cycles. They're the final two sevens. And then it's the final Jubilee. What do you think the Jubilee would be? The 6,000th year. You see? <clears throat> it's so mind blowing. And so I had done that video and I said, after the 50, the 14 years begins. And I thought it was going to be in 2020. I was so distraught by that video. I told the Lord I was taking that video down by the following morning. If I didn't get a confirmation, now nobody on earth knew I prayed this. It was late at night, about 1130, quarter to 12. The whole family was asleep. It was just me in quiet prayer in the shower. And I said, Lord, I'm, I, was, I was really, really anxious. I was really, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't happy. I was like, I'm going to take that video down. I said, unless you can confirm to me two things, that it will be, a, 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 the number 50 will be glaringly obvious and that I was on target, that I was on track, that, that I'm understanding what it is that I just shared. And I left it at that. I expected the following morning, I hope not, but I expected the following morning, I was gonna take that video down. And lo and behold, one o'clock in the morning, I see an email from our sister Jodell. She just had a Holy Ghost experience. She had interceded and she says the Holy Ghost stopped her at the 50 minute mark of the video. There was nothing happening at the 50 minute mark. And she said she stopped at the 50 minute mark of the video and the Holy Ghost told her she heard and knew that she had to tell me and she put it in brackets or in quotations. She said the Holy Ghost told me to tell you in quotations that I was right on target. I freaked out. You guys know the story. I ran up to my wife quarter after one in the morning. I was in a full on freak out. I had never experienced anything like that in my life, not before, not since. And what has come from that has just been exponentially revealing, exponentially revealing. Because it turned out right on target means bullseye. Bullseye is like Taurus, the bull, right? And it turns out that the eye of the bull of Taurus is the 14th brightest star in the sky. Yeah, that's right. It's the 14th brightest star in the sky and it's called bullseye. And what's a bullseye? In points, you know, like bullseye is, is 50. And the Hebrew alphabet, it's the 14th letter. It's noon, it equals 50. And the revelation of this ministry is the 50 days, the 14 years and the 50th Jubilee. I was freaking out. And you see, so this is, this is all that continued and continued and continued. And everything that has come to us to be revealed to us about noon and about the 50 days and, and the 14 years ever since has all led us to Taurus. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. And what has come from there in the revelation of the 50, I believe, is the final piece that we were given just a few weeks ago that it's 50 days from resurrection to the Feast of Weeks, which some would say Pentecost, but really Pentecost is after. It's the Feast of Weeks. It's, it's incredible. And so what had happened, though, is in seeking to understand this, we had looked at so many different potentials of 50 days along the way. One of them that we had focused on now for about a year and a half, but now this year has passed, it's the picture of it is done. Now, why was this so important? And what it was, let me show you what it was. If you go from the beginning of Hanukkah, okay? This isn't actually day one of Hanukkah. This is Hanukkah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and then the eighth day okay so it goes like this that's day one when you count 50 days from the beginning of hanukkah it ends up on tuba shavat and you would say well what, what would that have anything to do with anything well for one we believe we're in the 70th year that it's coming to an end and we know that there has to be this end. There has to be a connection to an end. However, the Lord, you see, our count has always been wherever the Lord is counting from. 
Well, now we know with a certainty that the Lord is counting from the Feast of Weeks, which is in Taurus. But what happened is we also understood about the New Year of Trees. You see, there's a very, very, very important piece of scripture, which is also counted in Luke chapter 13. And in Luke chapter 13, it's about the fig tree, right? And Jesus says, three years I've been coming. This, it's produced no fruit. Give it one more year. Let me dung it about. And if not, then cut it down, the guy says, right? The vine dresser says. So you have three years and then one. So it's like 70 years have passed. And then you've got three years and then give it one more year. And if not, cut it down. Well, when we came from there and we came and found this over in Leviticus that was shared with us, it said that when you come into the land and have, shall have planted all manner of trees. Well, they came into the land in 1948. They planted trees in February of 49. It says for three years, it's uncircumcised, right? You can't eat of it. In the fourth year, the fruit is to be brought holy and praised to the Lord. So you have three years, then the fourth year, but you see it's in the fourth year. So even though they came into the land in 1948, what did it say? It's not until you shall have planted all manner of trees. Well, that didn't happen until, until February of 1949, which means the only way you could be in the fourth year and bring the fruit to the Lord is if the Lord God never counted until they planted and then the year started, okay? But you have to understand, well, where's the Lord counting from? Well, it is Nisan in one sense for the sun, right? For, for Yeshua, for Jesus, but it's also Taurus for the father. So when they came into the land, they didn't have a government. So it wasn't until March that they had a government. You see? So the Lord God wasn't counting till Nisan of 1949. That's the only way if they planted in 1949, when you get to 1950, you would be in the first year, okay? 51, 52. So in 52 would be three years in the third year. And then what? 50, what? Uh, uh, 49 to 50, 50 to 51, 51 to 52, 52 to 53. So 52 to 53 is the fourth year. So there's no way you could be in the fourth year and it be the fourth year of the new year of trees within the fourth year if the count actually started in 1948. The Lord did not begin the count until after they planted the trees and their government was in, was in place in March. So it doesn't mean it was in March. It meant from that Nissan or from you know, uh, uh, what's called the beginning, which is Resurrection Day, or the beginning, which is Feast of Weeks to the Lord, and both of which were creation, as we've been teaching lately. <clears throat> so you see, so in the fifth year, they could eat it. Fifth year was 19, 1953, 1954 was year one. So what does that make this year that we're in right now? That makes it the 70th year. <clears throat> see? It's the 70th year. So this is how we got the revelation of understanding four years and where to begin the four years and then the 70 count. So do you understand why it was so important for us and why we were looking to the new year of trees? On the Hebrew calendar, <coughs> excuse me, the new year of trees in the 70th year was February 6th. And it just so happened from a Hanukkah count, which is lights, and there's a whole bunch of things that when, that when Christ comes as the Son of Man, he's coming as light in the darkness, right? So we were looking at this count of a 50 days from Hanukkah to Tuba Shavat. Because what is Tuba Shavat? It's a new year. It's the new year of trees. So it made complete sense to be looking for a new year and connected to the new year of trees. And so last year was a big deal. And into this year, <coughs> I, I wasn't sure what we were going to understand after this. I, I thought this was it. And lo and behold, 
The Lord had more for us through the Spirit. Okay? What else did we have? <coughs> Excuse me. What else did we have along the way? You guys will know this one. This one <coughs> is really where it all started to explode in the 50 days understanding. And this one started like four and a half years ago. I'd been following this almost uh, five years ago, this March or April, I think. Because what had happened, <coughs> excuse me, is the, is the book of Zechariah opened up to us, just as the book of Hosea did. They're the only two books that have 14 chapters. 14 chapters, 14 years. A lot of people say, oh, there, it, was, it was divided by men in chapters. These verses were divided by men. Okay, it was written by men too. And the Spirit instructed those men. Do you not think the Spirit instructed the men who put them into chapters and verses? <clears throat> Excuse me, I can prove that they have. In fact, we have proven it. We've got a chapter in the book. We've got videos all over the place proving that, in fact, it's true. And so what happened is when we realized, just like it said, see, these 70 years, you get to Zechariah 7, and it says those 70 years, everything is past tense because it's talking about seven years ago when they were in the 70th. But look at what it says. It says in Zechariah 7, starting in verse 5, it says, Speak unto all the people of the land and say unto the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years, did you at all fast unto me, even unto me? Verse 7. Should you not hear the words which the Lord hath cried by the former prophets when Jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity, and the cities thereof round about her when man inhabited the south of the plain? It's all past tense. You see, and we know Jerusalem is going to be destroyed at the beginning of the at, at the beginning of tribulation, at the beginning of the 14 years. And they're going to be removed for seven years. Well, this seemed like a massive clue, right? When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh month, even those 70 years. Kind of seems strange, right? Well, when you go and look into this, guess what you find out? You go from, <clears throat> um, where is it, where is it? Right here. From the ninth of Av, right? That ninth to the 10th of Av, this is the fasting and mourning of the fifth month. You go 50 days <clears throat> and you end up right in here which brings you to the fasting and the mourning of the seventh month. Now, you would say it's not here on Rosh Hashanah. It's over, where is it? Oh, I guess I didn't have my highlighted dates or events. But right here, you know what? Let me, wow, that's okay. We know where it is. So right here on the third of Tishri is where they have the fast of Gedalia. But the fast of Gedalia actually happened on Tishri 1. Okay, this is when Gedaliah had been leader for what, five, six weeks, whatever it was. And then Ishmael came. And Ishmael is a type of the one, uh, uh, the lion, the one from the north that's going to destroy Jerusalem. So the connections were absolutely incredible. It's telling us for the fifth and the seventh month, which means for 70 years, from when the count truly began, they were observing the fasting in the morning, the fifth and the seventh month. Well, that really seemed like a clue to me. Of course it would be a clue, right? Because what do we know happens? An attack <clears throat> at the beginning of 50 in northern Israel, and then an attack at what? The year's end. You see, what, what was it with going to the new year of trees. It was also a new year. And here was another 50-day count <clears throat> that had an attack at the beginning and an attack at the end, and it was the new year. 
You're like, oh my goodness, this has to be it. And then things came and went. Well, then you got to say, well, wait a second. He's saying in the fifth and the seventh month, those 70 years. So how could it be that this is connected to beginning at the fifth month? We're going to be, the the pre-trib would go in the fifth month? Well, that's what we'd been looking at for three years. Because that's one of the, that was at the time, for a long time, one of the clearest pieces of scripture we had of a 50-day count with an attack one and an attack two. Coming to a year's end and the start of the year. You see? And it was the fifth and seventh month. So, I mean, if you go to the calendar and you're looking at this, let's go back. Let's go to 2022. Check this out. We go to 2022 and we go to, where am I? Okay. The 9th to the 10th of Av and we do our 50 days and it comes to uh, uh, the year's end and the beginning of the year. Do you know what that means? Well, that means it's already happened in the 70th year. Hello. So now, if we go look at what this says, and we have truly understood that we are now in the 70th year, and it's really coming to an end, what did this say? It said that for those 70 years, they did fast and they did mourn on the 5th and 7th month. So what does that mean? That means they never did it in the 71st, 72nd, 73rd. In fact, when you go to Zechariah 8, it tells you they'll never do it again. So that means this right here, this fasting and mourning of the 9th of Av of 2022 and the fast of and mourning of Gedalia for the attack that happened at the year's end in Tishri 1 that they observe on the 3rd of Tishri, They'll never observe them again. Hello. They will never observe them again. So what does that mean if they'll never observe them again? Because it said they only did it for 70 years. Well, that means they will not see, they cannot be in the land by the 9th of Av of 2023. That's great news. (laughs) That's terrific news, isn't it? But do you see where the thought process then went? Because if it was the 70th year and we were considering this last year, you'd say, well, wait a second. What about Taurus? Hello. Taurus is Taurus is always savant. So if Taurus is the connection that the Holy Spirit gave us, why would we be looking all the way to the ninth of Av and going to Tishri 1? You see, late last year, earlier this year, this, this wasn't jiving anymore. It just, the, the connection couldn't be there. But we have an incredible amount of scripture that details this attack to this attack. There's a lot of scripture detailing it. But it said it was the fifth and the seventh month. So if it was the fifth and the seventh month, that's not at the beginning of it. That's not the beginning of the year. So if the beginning of the year is actually Nisan, and we know it is because he calls this the fifth and seventh month, those 70 years. We can't get to it this year. So if we can't get to it this year, and it's not connected to Taurus, because then that would be the 71st, something's wrong. This, this kind of goes out the window. But you, you see, I, I might think just initially, okay, yeah, it's just got to go right out the window. So why then are we given this? I believe the key component for us having received that understanding 
was based on understanding the revelation of attack one and attack two. This is something we've been teaching on here for years. We know there are going to be two attacks, one at the beginning of 50 days, one at the end of 50 days. The Holy Spirit confirms we had understood the 50 days, the 14 years, and then the 50th Jubilee. And so then it became, what was all the details? What are all the details of these events that are going to take place during the 50 days? Well, we know there's a 50 day between two attacks. And then in the past year, we came across Isaiah chapter 9, and Isaiah chapter 9 just exploded this out of the water for us. Because Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 1, it says, Nevertheless, the, the dimness shall not be such as it was in her vexation when at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. And afterward did more grievously afflict her by way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. So what happened? There was a light affliction in two uh, cities in the northern part of Israel. Do you understand? We'd been teaching on this for about three years at the time, three and a half years at the time, when this scripture finally opened up to us. We've been talking about a northern attack in two cities that will start the 50 days. It'll be the escape of the bride, bang, an attack, which will most likely be by Iran. It'll most likely, I would say, you know, probably 99% chance, I believe, that it'll be Tel Aviv and Haifa. And they've been preparing there like crazy. And look at everything exploding over there in Israel right now. You see? It's all part of the end of days. This first attack is called the light affliction. But after this first attack, look who shows up. Verse 2, it says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Hello, who's a great light? Jesus, right? They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Verse 3, halfway through, they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil, verse 9, for every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Listen to this. For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Okay, who do we know this is? Of course, it's Christ. But what is the reference they're giving a, this of Christ? It's after, <clears throat> it's after the light affliction, but before the big affliction. And look at what they're telling us. They're telling us it's connected to his birth. This is something we've been talking about for a long time here in this ministry. And we'll get to it a little later. It's connected to Christ at his birth, which is Luke chapter 2. We know the Gospel of Luke, the first four ch uh, uh, chapters are what he described to us in order. It's the pre-trib escape, the seven to the eight days, the 40 days of the Son of Man being here, his return at the end of seals in chapter three in the typology, and his return at the end of trumpets in chapter four in the typology built into it. Then chapter five is the story of the disciples, just like Mark chapter one is the beginning. You have the 40 days, and then you've got what? The beginning of the storyline of the disciples. But in Luke's, it doesn't begin till chapter five. That was the mystery of what Luke wrote in order within the Gospels. Look at this. We'll, we'll touch on that a bit more. So you have the light affliction. You have the Son of Man being born or the coming of the Son of Man. And then what do you have? Isaiah 9, verse 10 through 12. 
The bricks are fallen, but we will build with hewn stone. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore, the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against them and, uh, and join his enemies together. Listen to this, verse 12. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with an open mouth. Hello. We know that the lion of Jeremiah chapter 4 is the attack by Syria. Syria is with Assad and those who will be with them. Assad is the lion coming up from the thicket. And the destroyer of the Gentiles that will soon follow is the bear, which is Russia. The problem with all of this is the church believes that the white horse rider, it for not all of the church, but the vast majority, some of them are starting to come around a bit more. But, and I used to believe this too, until more revelation came to understanding, that they believed it was like white horse rider was, you know, the Syria, the, the pre-trip, right? Like maybe the antichrist typology. The red horse rider is Russia. The black horse, is uh is the leopard and then you had the pale horse that's not how it works the four horsemen are released from heaven they are released from heaven they are not the enemies being released from heaven to dwell into the people it's it's the periods of time the the ones releasing these events from heaven onto the earth <laughs> All right, they're not the individual people. The lion here is the one from Daniel chapter 7. This is Assad who is coming from the north to destroy Judah. It is Assad who is coming. It is Syria coming, not the one attacking the northern part of Israel, but the one that is compassing about will surround and destroy Jerusalem and cause them to flee into other lands to be destroyed, to be killed, and some taken captive. Okay? Look at what we see here. We've seen this story in uh, 2 Chronicles 24. It's told to us right here. This is how it starts, because this is, this is at the beginning of the 14 years. So what do we see? In 2 Chronicles 24, 23, it says, And it came to pass at the end of the year, do you see why we were looking for a year's end connection? The problem has always been, where is the Lord God counting from? Well, the Lord God is counting from, we'll come back to this in a second. The Lord God himself is counting from the Feast of Weeks. Shabua is the Feast of Weeks. We have shared this many times in the past that we forgot about, and then recently as well. Let me show it to you right here for those that haven't seen it. Feast of Weeks. All right, guys, it is the Feast of Weeks. Seventy weeks are determined, okay? The Lord God is counting from Feast of Weeks. Where is Feast of Weeks? Taurus. Wait until you see what we're going to break down in some new exciting understanding of in the beginning, right? Because there's two beginnings. It was Christ and the Father. The beginning was Resurrection Day. That was the beginning, and it was in Taurus. It was what we now call the Feast of Weeks, okay? So what do we see in this? Let's go back to 2 Chronicles 24 we see this attack that comes from the north by Syria. So it came to pass at the end of the year. So what are we seeing now? We've been looking for, you know, New Year of Trees end of year. We've been looking for Nisan, you know, uh, uh, end of Adar to, to start of Nisan as the end of the year. We've been looking for uh, Tishri, right? From Elul into Tishri as the year's end. There were even times in the past where we were looking on the Gregorian calendar, 365 days and then year one. We were even looking 
at April 1st as a year's end because that's what it was under the Julian before they changed to the Gregorian. We've looked at all of these things. And lo and behold, it turned out two years ago, I had already shared on the Feast of Weeks. In fact, it was in that video when the Holy Spirit confirmed the 50-day count. I believe that was the actual video. Yeah, it was that video from the one that the Holy Spirit confirmed that actually had the Feast of Weeks that I had shown was where the year of the Lord was where the Lord God was counting from. And I totally forgot it as time went by. Because if it passes on that year, we go to the next thing that could be a year's end. And we go 50 days back. But now we know we can't. Because it's Taurus. So this is what we're getting at. <clears throat> it wasn't any of this year end or that year end. It was to the Lord God, Taurus. Taurus at the Feast of Weeks. That's what the answer was. And I just showed you in Isaiah 9 that we know that it's Syria. And here we are, a piece of scripture we've been teaching on for three years. And it came to pass at the end of the year, because what's the end of the year? The following day is the beginning of the 14 years. And it came to pass at the end of the year that the host of Syria came up against them. And they came to Judah and Jerusalem and Jerusalem and destroyed all the princes of the people from among the people, and sent all the spoil of them unto the king of Damascus. For the army of the Syrians came with a small company of men. They must, you see, because Israel's too big. They've got a great army, but their time is up. In their pomp and in their pride, in the stiffness of their necks, the Lord must destroy them. He's not gonna completely wipe them out. He's not gonna completely destroy the land but he must allow his land to rest before he could build his temple. It says, And the Lord delivered a very great host into their hand because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. Hello. There it is. This is exactly what we were showing in Jeremiah chapter 4. When does this happen? At the end of 50 days, at the year's end, at the time of the Feast of Weeks after the anointing of the Holy Ghost. See, this lion that comes up destroys Jerusalem and Israel. See, everything's destroyed in a moment at the trumpet, the sudden destruction. You see? This is when they will be removed. But when is this? Well, this is the great attack. This is the big one that removes them from the land. That's at the 50 days. When we were in Isaiah 9, we were shown that there was a light one that came first. And when we say light, it's still probably going to be devastating. Maybe tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands killed. I don't know. But it's not going to be a long drawn out battle. Maybe just a couple days, maybe a, a handful of days. It won't last long. It'll happen during the wedding week in the third heaven. And when the wedding week is over, and when this is settled down, who comes at the end of the wedding? Who comes after the seven days on the eighth day? The Son of Man. It's the Son of Man coming. And this is where a lot of people get, get all bunched up in, you know, I don't want to say their panties in a bunch, right? But they just get all twisted up. They say, oh my goodness, this guy has lost his mind. He's thinking Christ is, uh, the son of man is coming during the 40 days. Oh my goodness, it can't be. He has absolutely lost his mind <laughs> because we know Antichrist comes first. Well, he does come first, but not as first as you think because you have never understood who Luke's gospel is speaking to. If you understood Luke's discourse, you would see and understand these things. If you watch these revelations, these intro series, you would understand these things. So what we're seeing is the first attack at the escape. That's in northern Israel. This will be with Israel, with Iran and, and some of their proxies with them. And it'll be a short-lived 
attack after the escape. What's going on during this time? The seven-day wedding. Then what happens? The eighth day, the Lord returns on the eighth day. Then he's here for 40 days. When he's here for 40 days, they end. Then you've got the three days to the Holy Ghost. When the anointing of the Holy Ghost happens, bam, they go out from Jerusalem like they were told only in Luke 24. And Jerusalem that was compassed about during this period here was being compassed about. After that anointing happens and they go out from Jerusalem, bam, Jerusalem is attacked and destroyed. In a moment. In a moment with a smaller army of Syria. You see, when I spoke about Luke and knowing Luke in order, it's Luke 1, 2, 3, 4. You see, Paul, uh, uh, Luke had this understanding in order and he was making a declaration of all things being understood in order. And he says that he had perfect understanding of all things from the very first and that he knew it in order. Well, pray tell, right? What does that mean? What does that mean that nobody has ever understood what it meant before? What, what could it possibly be? We revealed it here in this ministry. Pre, mid, post, or sorry, pre, 40 days, mid, and post. These are the four times of the Lord. And you see, the whole world has just been told, he's coming to take us, and then he doesn't return till feet down. This is why there's going to be so many people caught off guard. All they've heard all their life is seven years. You see, we have this connection in the storyline of Paul, uh, uh, of John the Baptist being born. John the Baptist was what? Spirit-filled from the beginning. The bride of Christ is what? Spirit-filled. Then you have what? You have his birth. His dad could finally speak. He says that the Lord God, right on the eighth day, the Lord God visited and redeemed his people. So what do you have? You have the beginning of 50. You have a what? An eight days. Well, what do we know happens on the eighth day? The seven days of the wedding have taken place. On the eighth day, what happens? Son of man being born. The start of his 40 on day one, right? On, uh, day one is the eighth day. So you have seven and then bang, the eighth day when he comes as the son of man. And what's the typology we have? His birth. What was Isaiah chapter nine? <clears throat> the light affliction. They're the ones in darkness and bam, Jesus shows up. The son of man shows up and the storyline we're told is his birth. Again, what's the, what's the connection to his birth? 40 days. 40 days. Okay, you can go into Luke and it's the uh, chapter 3. You've got the typology of the end of seals. You go into chapter 4 and it's the typology when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. He's going to destroy Satan. You see that Satan had all power and authority was given unto him in, that, in a day, in, in a moment. And he tries to tempt Christ. It's a picture of him returning feet down on the Mount of Olives. It is prophecy layered in to these events. So what did we just see there? We just saw like a typology of John's birth. The Lord, then the eighth day. And on the eighth day, the 40 days of the Son of Man beginning. Which is connected to what? The escape and the first attack. The Lord God coming after the seven-day wedding, and he starts on the eighth day. It's everywhere throughout Scripture, over and over and over again. Watch this. Let me take you to another place. <clears throat> we go into John chapter 20. And in John chapter 20, so, so we saw that there was a 50-day count that went from Hanukkah to the new year of trees and the reason was because of light and was because it was a new year and it was a new year of trees which was a count of years 
and it was given to us in Leviticus. But it's not connected to Taurus. Then we saw there was a count of, of 50 days with an attack one and an attack two, and they were 50 days apart, and it ended at the year's end. The problem was, is the Lord God is counting from Taurus. The fifth month and the seventh month is, it's too late. So it's either too late or it's past and it can't come again. So it couldn't have been to give us the fifth and the seventh month, but it was to show us within a 50 day period, there will be attack one and an attack two. Again, proven to us finally just several months ago in Isaiah chapter nine. But the timing wasn't telling us the fifth and the seventh month. Just like the new year of trees, it was helping us to understand the year count, but from Hanukkah to the new year of trees wasn't the 50 day count. You following? So then as we, as we continued and continued digging into this, we had understood this for a long time as well. We knew that the story in John chapter 20 is the story of the resurrection and the beginning of the 50 days. And it goes from the gospel of John into the resurrection story in Mark into Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2. Okay? So what do we see? Early in the morning, he says, you know, don't touch me. I haven't yet ascended to the Father. And then he came the same day at evening. So on the same day at evening. So the bride's gone. He comes at the same day at evening. And he's only there for a moment, right? He ends up breathing on the apostles, not the disciple workers. Okay, not the seals we call the seals workers or the remnant bride, but his apostles. There will be modern day apostles when the 50 days begins at the, after the escape. In the, hist in, the, in the history, in the is, he breathed on them. Who are they this time? Is he going to breathe on them? We don't know exactly how it's going to play out. It's going to be typologies of these things. So here we are again at the beginning of the 50 days. He breathes on them. They're going to receive the Holy Ghost. And then what happened? He left, right? Thomas wasn't there. The Lord left and then what? After eight days again, he shows up. Do you see a pattern? After seven days and the eighth day, he shows up. When he shows up on the eighth day, he briefly meets with the, the apostles again. And after that, he goes and he meets the disciples in Luke chapter 24, represented by the two on the road to Emmaus. This is the remnant bride disciple workers that are represented by the two on the road to Emmaus. I believe they represent a group of 12,000 and 12,000 from the tribe of Dan and from the tribe of Ephraim. Okay, there's a whole story. We've done teachings on it and everything on it. Okay, when you follow this, where are we now? Well, we're still on the eighth day. So on the eighth day, he's begun now his 40 days and the Son of Man is here. These guys follow him. They have him stay, stay behind and eat with them. And what does it say? And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, bre blessed it, break it and gave it to them. So he sat with them and ate and he also served them. He only does that to Luke's group. He only does that to this group of disciples. These guys, so he vanishes, they go and tell others, and then he shows up again in the midst of them. He opens up their understanding, which we've taught on many times recently or a number of times recently. The prophetic in this is he opens up their end time understanding of these things still yet to be revealed about him at the time of the end. That still must be fulfilled. They hang out with them. He tells them what? He tells them that they're going to go out and what? That repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Again, 
this beginning at Jerusalem is only talked about with this group of disciples in Luke. Okay? And it says, And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with on power from on high. We go to Acts chapter 2. Uh, sorry, Acts chapter 1. And in Acts chapter 1, so what did we have? We had the beginning of 50 days. He came back after the seven, which is on the eighth day. He met one more time with the apostles. Then on the same eighth day, he meets with the disciples. When he meets with the disciples, they follow him, they hang out. He serves them first, okay? He meets them, and on that day, he hangs with them, he eats with them, and he serves them. They follow him for 40 days. At the end of 40 days, having taught them on things pertaining, pertaining to the kingdom of God, he then says, look, the angel says, look, not many days they're going to be anointed from the Holy Ghost. We go to Acts chapter 2, not many days is what? Three days approximately. And they're anointed by the Holy Ghost on Pentecost. What's the storyline? Beginning of 50, seven days, him coming on the 8th. He had already anointed the apostles. He meets with them one more time. Then on that same eighth day, the beginning of the 40, he hangs out. He first gives a, a special meal to those disciples and serves and eats with them. They follow him from that point for 40 days. He then leaves and they go to Jerusalem and wait to be anointed by the Holy Ghost, who from there will then go out to all nations. And we know, bam! That's when the compassing about of Syria had taken place and Jerusalem's going to be destroyed after these guys are anointed and go out to the nations from there. We have the exact same storyline playing out. One of the, what you can say at this point is you might be thinking, well, hold on a second, right? There, there seems to be an issue. You said it was the, the Feast of Weeks, right? You're saying it's the Feast of Weeks, but they're calling this Pentecost, right? And the church and the Jews both call the Feast of Weeks Pentecost. Or one calls it Feast of Weeks, one calls it Pentecost. But they're not the same, okay? You're going to see what I mean. Because how the revelation of this came about was from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, again, this is something we just recently spoke about. You have the resurrection of the Lord. And when I first came across this, when it dawned on me as I read it, this was, a, I think, a couple of years ago now, maybe a little bit more, my head almost exploded. I couldn't believe what I was reading. We've all been told it was just the 12 disciples. Uh, you know, they called disciples, apostles, apostles, disciples, and everywhere you read, it's only 12, right? And then 11. And we know then it was replaced. But every single place, so we've all been told it's just the 12, just the 12, just the 12. Well, it clearly wasn't. Because at his resurrection, in 1 Corinthians 15, 5, it said that he was seen of Caiaphas, then of the 12. We revealed that the 12 means the 12 tribes, right? The heads of the 12 tribes. Listen to what it says then. After that. He was seen by above 500 brethren at once. This is represented by the Mark group. This is represented by Matthew. So you got the Matthew, the 12 tribes, just like you read about even in the discourse. Then the tribes saw him and, oh, and they freaked out, right? This is related to the end of Mark. Then it says, after that. So he met with one group of 12. He met with a large group, of, larger group of people. Then he met, after that, with another group of 12 or 11 who were the apostles. This is the John group. This is the John chapter 20 group that we were just showing. This is the beginning of the 50 days group. And then look what it says. And last of all, he was seen of me also, born out of due time. This is Paul talking as the pre-trib bride. Born out of due time. Pre-trib, born premature. So what do we have? He met with a Mark group, a Matthew group, 
the John group, and then the Luke group. Why? Because the Luke group has, has a dual, remember? Luke group is pre-trib. But Luke group from the pre-trib, who are those born out of due time, they are also, they're from them, there is a remnant group of the remnant bride that we say, that's the, the Smyrna group, the church of Smyrna workers that will remain. So what do you have? You had the count of the feast of weeks and 50 days. You get it? From his resurrection, he meets with the Matthew group and he meets with the Mark group. This is a representation of the seven times seven Sabbaths from his resurrection. So from resurrection day, we know what happens at resurrection day. It's seven Sabbaths, right? Let me, let's go to the, let's go to the calendar. So from resurrection day, okay, seven days, okay, and you keep going and you have what? You come to 49 and the 50th day. The 50th day is the beginning of a 50 day count as well. So what you're seeing is during this process in the prophetic, what is being told to us is he met with the Mark and the, or sorry, the Matthew and the Mark group during the seven Sabbaths. And then he meets with the John group to the eighth day. And then again, you could say he meets with the Luke group, which is the 40 days and then going to the 50th day and so forth, right? However, this is the process of what is the, the events and how they played out. The first seven times seven are represented by Matthew and Mark. Then John, then Luke, in you could say in two senses, right? Because it's the pre-trib group as those being born out of due time, but they're also the remnant worker group who are the 40 days that he meets with after the apostles, right? And then go in with them for 40 days and then through seals. So what are we seeing with this group and this group? Verse five and six are the Matthew and Mark group that represent the seven Sabbaths of the Feast of Weeks. Then you have what? The beginning of the 50 day count, which is John's gospel in chapter 20 when he meets with the apostles. The one we just showed you. You see? So what do we know? What was the huge revelation of this in the end? It's reversed. It's reversed. So what comes first? The 50 days, then seven and seven. So it starts with the pre-trib, the 50 days from John, and then again back into the Luke group for the 40. Then you got the seven years of seals for Mark and the seven years of trumpets for Matthew. So in the end of days, it plays in reverse, but instead of being weeks of seven's count, it's years of seven, but it's not 49 years. It's the final two seven and seven years of seals and trumpets. So then what are we looking for <clears throat> to begin it? The pre-trib, whoops, what the heck? We're looking for the pre-trib escape as those born out of due time at the beginning of the 50 days when he'll then meet with the apostles. And of course, then again, he'll meet with the portion of this group, right? The remnant bride workers. And when this 50 day count portion with these two groups is done, it'll start the seven years of seals and then the seven years of trumpets. Remember, this is why I said it at the beginning. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. So when we look at this storyline, 
what do we get? You can still call it the Feast of Weeks, right? So what do you get? Seven times seven of the Feast of Weeks, 49, and then the 50th day. When the 50th day is over, what begins? The 14 years, seven of seals and seven of trumpets. The first will be last. The last will be first. It's everywhere. It's all over the place. Remember what we need to have connected in this. Taurus, at the Feast of Weeks, is the Lord God's year's end and beginning of the year. Shavuot is where the Lord God counts from. This is the end of 70 and the beginning of 71. Which is why they will not observe the fasting and mourning of the fifth and seventh month beyond 70 years, which means they've already observed it. It's awesome. It's, it, it's absolutely everywhere. <clears throat> okay? Watch this. And, and how this came to be in understanding this was the revelation of the end of days. The Holy Spirit confirmed that it was 50 days, then 14 years, then the 50th Jubilee. So what was it in the past? It was seven and seven in the 50 days. But now we're talking end of times where typologies of days become years. So a seven and seven in days counts with weeks becomes the seven and seven of years. But it still has a 50 day count before it, which is the Feast of Weeks, but also plays out in a typology of a Pentecost count, but it's not. It's the Feast of Weeks. Let me show you in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 lays it out for us. Okay? From the morrow, after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be completed. That means from the 16th of the first month, Nisan, seven Sabbaths are complete. And the day after, you're going to number 50 days. Not the 50th day, but 50 days. <clears throat> you see, that's then the count to Pentecost. But it's still what? Seven Sabbaths complete. And on day one of the 50th is still what the Lord is telling us here in the end of days. It seems like a Pentecost count, but it's actually the Feast of Weeks count because why? Well, we're just going in reverse. So it, it's almost like you could say what the church says, that the Feast of Weeks is Pentecost. But in actuality, it isn't. Pentecost is still going to play out in the future. In the future. In fact, let me show you two great examples. I'm going to show you that the, the, um, uh, uh, the Hanukkah count... And the 50 days of the Hanukkah count are definitely off the table. Like I said, for one, yes, the it was a 50-day count to the New Year of Trees, but we now know that that was to give us understanding of the four years that came first before the 70 years actually began. The second piece of it is we know that it can't because in Mark and in Matthew's discour uh, discourses, it says, pray that it be not winter. And at that point, it's about two and a half years into seals for Mark's and about three and a half years into trumpets for Matthew's. Which means there's a clue in saying, let not pray that your flight be not in winter, which means it's probably going to be somewhere around winter. And what is the time of Hanukkah? It's always right around winter. Which means, if we go to John chapter 10, and if you've followed this ministry for a while, and if you haven't, you'll come to know this. As I showed with, uh, or as I explained, in Hosea and in Zechariah, both of them being 14 years, there's a reason why Jan John stands alone and isn't called synoptic. There's a prophetic 
revelation within his 21 chapters, which are the seven quote unquote easy years where the bride is being woken up. Then you got seven years of seals represented in here. And then you've got seven years of trumpets represented in the final seven chapters of John. It is a prophetic storyline riddled throughout the entire gospel of John to the end of days. We've proven it many, many, many times. And you'll see it on this chart here, what we call the chapters to years, okay? John has in the beginning, Genesis has in the beginning. You're gonna see a typology, the first 21 chapters of Genesis to the 21 chapters of John play with similarities in typologies to the end of days. Well, what happens is that, that's where I was. In John's gospel, when you go to John chapter 10, you're going to see the connection to John chapter 10 being in the third year of seals. In the third year of seals means after two and before three is complete. So it could be anywhere within that third year of seals. Well, we know within the third year of seals that Antichrist shows up when he gets his power to continue 42 months. And we know that it's Mark's discourse at about two and a half years in after World War III, when Antichrist gets his power, which is the abomination of desolation in Mark, which is the mark of the beast, that they're now to flee into the wilderness. Well, what do we know about that? That's two and a half years in from late spring, early summer is right around winter two and a half years from now, which means it would be somewhere around Hanukkah. So what do you think the chances are in John chapter 10 that we hear Jesus warning about the, 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 the wolf coming in, the thief and the wolf coming in through, coming like over the fence and not coming in through the door like the shepherd would. This is all about the warning of the Antichrist coming. The wolf who's coming, who's going to scatter the sheep. This is two and a half years into seals being given to us prophetically revealed in John chapter 10. And what do you think John chapter 10 then goes on to say? And it was in John 10 verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of dedication. And it was winter. What is the Feast of Dedication, brothers and sisters? You know what it means. It means Hanukkah. And it was winter. And in Mark 13, when the Antichrist comes and gets his power to continue 42 months, it's the abomination of desolation for the mark of the beast. And look at what we read. False Christs and false prophets. So the Antichrist and the false prophet show up. And what does it say? Where is it? Right here. Uh, where is it? Where is it? No, back here. Uh, oh, right here. In verse 18, in Mark 13, verse 18, and pray ye that your flight be not in winter. We've been teaching that the first two and a half years of seals then Antichrist comes, and it's the time of the abomination of desolation. When Antichrist gets his power to continue 42 months, and the false prophet is there, which would make it, what, two and a half years from the time of everything beginning, the 14 years in Taurus at the Feast of Weeks, would be what? Winter. Winter would be what? Hanukkah. Chapter 10 is in the third year, which is the time of what? Antichrist scattering the sheep and fleeing at Hanukkah. You see? So to me, Hanukkah is a done deal. It's not even a question. It is off the table. It's not connected to Taurus. And it's in winter. All right? So that one is off the table. We have now the other one, like we just said, the one going from 9th of Av to the 1st of Tishri, that one is off the table. But it's not off the table because of its pertinence of attack 1 and attack 2. It's attack 1 and attack 2 that revealed it to us. 
just like the new year of trees count revealed to us light and him coming after the first attack and also that it was the four years of the new year of trees so as we we continue what else are we going to see connected to this what else is this 40 days like or this 50 days connected to <clears throat> well let's have a look at this when we come into john uh, sorry luke chapter 17 his disciples are saying you know what's it going to be like at the end of days what's going to be the sign of your coming and everything else he tells them and in chapter 24 he says he's going to be as lightning from one end to to the other in his day this is a lot of what the last video also talked about this day as lightning from one end unto the other is when he comes at the end which is matthew 24's discourse when he comes at the end of the sixth year of trumpets, which is the end of 13 years total of tribulation, when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, and <clears throat> that's his day. But listen to what he says in verse 25. But first, but first. So before I come in my day as lightning from one end to the other, it's going to start with, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation now hold on do you think when he comes as lightning from one end unto the other when he comes down feet down on the mount of Olives, and the world will see him do you think he's going to suffer many things and be rejected of the final generation at that point <laughs> no the whole world will know who he is so what is this but first all about well, listen to what it says. But first, must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation? Well, that means most people are going to reject him because what? Well, they have no idea he's coming. Some will believe in him, of course, during the 40 days. Some will believe in him. But most are going to think he's the Antichrist. You're going to see. I'm going to explain this all to you. What does he say these but first days will be like? He says... And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days, plural, of the Son of Man. So clearly it's not about when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives. It's about the but first, and it's connected to the 40 days of Noah as the days of him as the Son of Man. And it says what? They did eat, they drank, they married wives, were given in marriage until the day Noah got in the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. So what's this a reference to? Well, he's telling us to go look at Noah. So we go to the story of Noah, and we know, we talked about a little bit even in the last teaching, and we've, we've broken this down now for a couple of years at least. This isn't the Matthew 24 representing that final 14th year when he comes feet down on the Mount of Olives and then brings the destruction, and it's all the typology. You see the one stays and one goes, right? One in the field, one stays, one goes. One grinding at the millstone, one stays, one goes. That's about when he comes in the final year, which will be as the days of Noah in Matthew 24, when he comes as lightning from one end unto the other. This one is the breakdown of him being here for the 40 days first before the 14 years start. And listen to how it starts. In Genesis 7, verse 4, it says, for yet seven days, okay? So meaning a count has begun, but there's still seven days to go. Then in verse 10, it says, and it came to pass after seven days. So now those first seven days, the seven days have begun, and now the seven days have ended. So what does after seven days mean? You see, what is after seven? seven days mean it means the eighth day what happened on the eighth day they were all in the ark and what does it say verse 16 and they that went in went in male and female of all flesh as god had commanded him and the lord shut him in and the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the ark was lifted up and so forth, right? So what do we have? 
seven days and after seven days, which means on the eighth day, the 40 days began. <laughs> what did we see in John chapter 20? Going to at, going into John, uh, uh, Luke 4, 24, going into Acts. Seven to the eighth or at, right after eight days starts the 40 on the eighth day. What did we see? What did we see in the story of uh, uh, um, what was the other one? Uh, the story in uh, Luke's gospel, Luke being in order, John the Baptist birth, the eighth day, bang, the 40 days of the son of man, which is connected to beginning on the eighth day. You see, it doesn't mean John was born at Passover and Christ was born uh, 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 eight days later. That's not what it means. You see, these things that played out in the was and that played out in the is, they're all going to play out in the is to come in a typology. But what played out over thousands of years will play out over 14. That's why Matthew and Mark's discourse tell us that it's going to be a time worse than it was in all of human history since the creation. Could you imagine? Let that sink in for a moment. All of the stories and all of the chaos and craziness that you've read about in history, the giants and everything, all of that will be compacted into a 14-year period of the end of days. Mid-seals, when the Antichrist comes, is going to be the worst than it ever was to that point. Mid-trumpets, when, when the Lord is cut off after the temple is rebuilt in the first three and a half years of trumpets, Satan is cast down, the pit is open. That's going to be even worse than when Antichrist got his power to continue. Insanity, absolute insanity. So here we have after seven on the eighth day. So it's the typology of that wedding week, the Lord coming after the seven days on the eighth day. And there's your 40 days. You go to chapter eight. And what do we see in chapter eight in verse six? And it came to pass at the end of 40 days. So this is like the son of man. You see the son of man in chapter 17 of Luke said that his days would be as Jonah's represent I mean as Noah's representing the 40 days and they were all marrying and given in marriage until the Lord locked the door right bam the 40 days begin and then what what happens after the 40 days well we know from John into Luke and Acts that it then said not many days from now which represents 3 days and then there was the anointing. And during those three days is when the compassing about will take place by Syria and those with Syria who will destroy Jerusalem. And so what happens after the 40 days? <clears throat> well, now that's 47 days have ended. The son of man is gone. And we've got the raven going out. Who does the raven represent? The Arab, right? Dusky hue because of the darker skin complexion. You see? A dusky glow, the covering texture, it's this, their skin, and it's Arab. This is representative of Ishmael, who brings about the second attack that represented the 50th day, the second attack on Jerusalem, in relation to the fifth and seventh month one. You see why it was important? It's giving us understanding of how it all blends together. <clears throat> every piece of these 50-day counts has a connection to how it will play out. So what happens when the raven goes out? Well, the 40 days of the Son of Man are done, and there's going to be a compassing about, a surrounding that takes place before the attack. And before the attack, what happens on the 50th day? The dove goes out first. Jerusalem is being compassed about by the raven, by the Arab, by Syria by Assad, but he's not going to attack until the anointing of the Holy Ghost, which is the dove on the 50th day. Once the anointing has happened, <coughs> what happens? The dove leaves. The dove in this case is pulled into the ark. The, the Holy Ghost goes to heaven. When does the Holy Ghost go to heaven? On the 50th day. And what immediately happens at that point? The 14 years begin. Look, seven days as years, and then yet another seven days as years. These first seven 
as we recently showed, the second seven for stayed literally means just wait. But the beginning of the first seven is the tribulation beginning. So when the dove leaves, the tribulation of the 14 years begins, represented as seven days, as the seven years of seals. When these seven days or seven years are done, look at what you see. The Holy Ghost goes out again and plucked off. The word plucked is harpazo in, in Greek. It's the olive branch that was grafted in, right? The, the, the Gentiles that were grafted in, bang, plucked off. It's the great multitude rapture. Then you got seven more days of seven more years. And when those seven days or years are done, it's the 600th or 6,000th that's over. And it's the first year, first day, first month of the 6,000th year. It's the Jubilee. It's incredible. So what do we see? Before the attack, which begins right at the beginning of the 14 years after the dove is left, bang, the attack happens. We're seeing the same storyline again. And he told it to us. It was revealed in this incredible revelation, <coughs> excuse me, by him telling us, but first. What was the clue for us in this but first? The clue was twofold. It was going back to Luke chapter 21, where in Luke chapter 21, they asked Jesus and he said unto them, meaning he's not talking to Luke's group. He's talking to the Mark and Matthew. He said unto them like he overheard. You only have black letter words written in two places in Luke's discourse showing <clears throat> that it's not pertaining to this 40, 50 day period of time of Luke's discourse, but represents the end of the 50 days. Look at what it says. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom and king against kingdom, so on and so forth. What is this? This is the red horse rider. It's not the white horse rider. You see, when you go to Mark's discourse, where does the actual tribulation begin? Okay. Look at what it says. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Bam. This is the beginning of the 14 years in Mark's discourse. There's no black letter words. <clears throat> it starts at the red horse. Now, does it start 50 days earlier? Absolutely. But it's not, it, it, it's a beginning 50 days earlier, but it's kind of like just the end of the, what, what the is, right? It's the end of from Christ to the pre-trib escape, but it's only the beginning of the end, okay? It's the end, but the beginning, okay? But not fully started. It's not until the time of the red horse rider and the attack on Jerusalem that's connected to the 50th day after the anointing and they go out from Jerusalem that starts the 14 years, that is the beginning of the end, you see? It's kind of like the end of the beginning and the beginning of the end, okay? Remember, the, the first will be last, the last will be first. So if first is last and last is first, you also have this play on it within the name of Christ. The Alpha and the Omega, right? Wait till you see what we're going to show about that. It's going to blow your mind. The first shall be last. The last shall be first. There's the Aleph and the Tav, the Tav and the Aleph. It's so wild, okay? So this is where you see the actual tribulation beginning. In relation to the first attack, when it goes nation against nation, which is at the beginning of the 14 years, not at the beginning of 50. So when he was telling them in, in, John, in Luke 17, that he said, but first, when we come back here and we say, we see that he says nation against nation, he's talking to them. He then says in verse 12, but before all these, hello. Over, over in, in 17, he said, but first. So before it all begins, there's a but first or but before all of these. So before the red horse rider of nation against nation, 
there's a but before, which means if we're following this in this time where we are right now, he's saying but before. Now, does that count? Is he saying but before? Does it start at the beginning of the 50 or does it start at the 40, the beginning of the 40? I, excuse me, I would submit to say that this may begin at the beginning of the 50 after the escape, okay? But more than likely, the but first or but before all these will begin at the 40 days. <clears throat> Excuse me, we got many more things. Sorry, one sec. <clears throat> i get that out. So we're gonna, you're going to see there's still many more things within this week that we're going to talk about. But I believe because Luke 17 said, but first, and Luke 21's discourse said, but before all these, I believe they're both connected to the 40 days beginning. Because this disciple group during this one week <clears throat> is girded about, okay? They're to be strengthened. They're to be prepared and ready for when he comes and knocks. Okay, so I don't believe this, all of this that, that's being spoken about in this Luke's discourse, I don't believe it quite begins fully there yet in relation to this conversation of what he's saying here. I believe this is the beginning of 40 days with him. <clears throat> all right. And that's why there's this delivering you up into synagogues and rulers for my sake. And it just so happened, right? They wanted to pass a bill to stop Christians from preaching that they would imprison them. It didn't pass, but don't you think that all they got to do is say, bam, they could have a group of them say, let's do it, because there's going to be chaos in Jerusalem, right? Millions of people will have vanished. Northern Israel will have been attacked. And then all of a sudden, they're going to think all these crazies with Christians who are there, who are the worker bride, remnant bride with the Son of Man, declaring this, this destruction that's coming upon them. But the world as he said in Luke 17, is going to reject them. They're not going to believe he is who he says he is. And we're going to talk more about that. And look at what happens. They're going to be betrayed. Some are going to be put to death. And listen to what he says in verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the desolation thereof is near. Let them which be in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst depart out and let not, let not them that are in the countries enter here into, for these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that give suck into those days, and to them, uh, uh, sorry, uh, unto them that were with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Remember that. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away captive into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down to the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's the end of seals. <clears throat> seven years it's going to be trodden down. Seven years this tribulation of this portion is then going to take place. When does it begin? A compassing about. What did he say he would do? He's going to, during these 40 days, he also told us that he is going to warn. Come on now, right? About right here, I think it's 40 days. When these 40 days are done, the raven enters the Assad, right? The raven spirit enters Assad and the compassing about takes place. You see, because he was just warning them that they're going to see when they see themselves surrounded, flee. This is the second attack at the 50th day. This is when the raven spirit will enter Assad. And this is the compassing about period. And at this point, the Holy Ghost anointing takes place. Then they go out into all the nations. They flee from there. And Assad, Syria, those from the north, the lion of the north, attacks and destroys Jerusalem. That is precisely what is being spoken about here in Luke chapter 21. That's why Luke's 
doesn't have any abomination of desolation. It's all the before 14 years. It's all the above 14 years. Did you see that? What was the story in in uh, in first in Second Corinthians 12? Above 14 years. What does Luke say? But before the 14 years begins is what it means. What does Luke 17 say? But first. You see? They're all saying the same thing. It's this period above the 14 years. So how do you know that this is the Son of Man? What's, what's telling us that it's the Son of Man? This is where it goes back. When you reveal, when you, when you come to understand who the Gospels are speaking to, you realize why there's such a drastic difference in the story of Jonah. In the story of Jonah in Luke, he says he's going to be as Jonah was, which was a warning for 40 days. He never fulfilled that yet. The world will try to tell you that he did. He did not. And then when you read Mark's version, he said they get no sign and he got in the ship and he left. That's a contradiction. Because in Mark, he said, he, I mean, in Luke, he said he would be as, as Jonah was, a sign which is 40 days to Nineveh. And then in Matthew, he says he's going to be as Jonah was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, as Jonah was in the fish. Well, Jesus never fulfilled that, and we know what's going on there as well. <clears throat> but it's very contradictory. So why is it such a contradiction? Because people have never understood who the gospels were speaking to yet. The, the Lord just simply hadn't made it revealed until these past five years. We're being given, as I said at the beginning, the revelation of the open book, the mysteries that were hidden since the foundations of the earth. And look at what he tells them here in Luke 11 as the sign of Jonah. Starting in verse 29, halfway through, they seek a sign and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was a sign unto the Ninevites, so shall also the Son of Man be to this generation. Do you know every time Jesus is relating that with the word generation, at no point in the New Testament does he mean the generation they were in? It was all prophetic. Somebody did a video on that not too long ago. It was shared in the forum. It's all prophetic. We know it's prophetic. We've been proving it for five years. It was great to see somebody else say that. Well, guess what? When you begin to understand that he's talking about that prophetically, what are you going to do with him saying he would be as Jonah was, being the son of man here for 40 days? Hello? So he's going to be here as Jonah was for 40 days. <clears throat> He's going to be as Luke chapter 2, 40 days from the eighth day. He's going to be as the ark after seven, which is the eighth day in the 40 days. It's everywhere. He's going to be as Luke in order right to, to his birth, which, which is directly related to Isaiah 9 when he comes after the first attack, which is northern Israel. That happens at the beginning of the 50, and this kerfuffle takes place during the wedding week. Then he comes on the 40 days, on the eighth day to begin his 40. Over and over and over again, it's all throughout the entirety of the storyline. It's absolutely, <coughs> excuse me, everywhere. So let's go now <clears throat> and see what it is to the writers. Okay, what do we have with the riders? We know that it's the lamb that opened the first seal and behold, a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow <coughs> and a crown was given to him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay, people will try to tell you, people all over the place will tell you this is the Antichrist. It is not the Antichrist. These are the same people that unknowingly, and I'm going to show you a clip of a very famous one, <clears throat> that are unknowingly siding with the Arabs, with the Muslims, and they don't even know it. There are some, 
that believe the white horse rider is the son of man. But they believe that this coming and conquering and to conquer, they believe it has to do with the pre-trip. No. This is the beginning of the 40 days of the son of man. Okay? I'm going to prove it to you. Remember what we were just saying about when the Holy Ghost leaves? Right? The Holy Ghost is there. So what happens? The Arab goes out. Okay? The Arab spirit goes out. The compassing of Jerusalem takes place, but the great sword of the attack, remember? Remember I told you to remember that verse? To remember where it says, in a great sword, right? That the sword is coming against them? Well, listen to what it says. We know that the Holy Ghost, so the Arab is there, the, the Arab spirit, Assad, the compassing about of Jerusalem is taking place after 47 days, so 48, 49, 50. At the end of 50, when the Holy Ghost gives the anointing, the Holy Ghost leaves, it said. Okay? Then they leave from Jerusalem, and the attack happens. But the Holy Ghost, who is representative as peace, of course, has to leave. Well, look what happens at the red horse rider. And he opened the second seal, I said, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat there on, listen to this, to take peace from the earth. Who do we know is representative of peace in Scripture? The Holy Ghost. Who do we know leaves on the 50th day? The Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost leaves on the 50th day and they flee from Jerusalem going into the nations that have been anointed by the Holy Ghost, what happens? The great sword has been given and the beginning of World War III starts with nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Well, it just so happens <coughs> once peace is taken from the earth, the Holy Ghost, it says that they should now kill one another. Is not kill one another nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, neighbor against neighbor, people against people? And there was given unto him a great sword, right? We've even showed this so many times here in 2 Esdras. The Most High delivered those who were on the earth. This is the pre-trib. Bewilderment of mind came to those who dwelled on the earth, and they started to plan to make war against each other. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, people against people. It's the beginning <coughs> of World War III with the attack on Jerusalem, which is that great sword after the Son of Man has completed his 40 days. In fact, I'm going to show you more that this white horse rider is the Son of Man. Let's go now into Ezekiel chapter 21. Ezekiel is another typology of the Son of Man. And he's even called the Son of Man. That's the clue. Hello. Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 2. Son of Man, set thy face toward Jerusalem and drop thy word toward the holy pl pl places and prophesy against the land of Israel. saying uh, And say to the land of Israel, thus saith the Lord, behold, I am against thee and I draw forth my sword out of his sheath and I will cut off from thee the righteous from the wicked. Seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked, or sorry, the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath against all flesh, from south to north, that all flesh may know that I am the Lord, have, that I, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath. It's everywhere. Verse 9, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened and is furbished. It is sharpened to make a, uh, to make a sore slaughter. Verse 11, He hath given it to be furbished that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened. And it is furbished to give into the hand of the slayer. 
What do you think the Son of Man's going to be doing? <laughs> uh, warning that they're about to be compassed about and destroyed? Do you, you think maybe? Mm, kind of maybe, right? Man, we've taught on this so much in the past. It's It's everywhere. It's Zechariah 4, it's Ezekiel, it's Daniel, it's Hosea, it's, 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 uh, it's everywhere. It's filled throughout Scripture. You see? It's the Son of Man here for 40 days, warning, as Jonah did, to the final generation. You see? Because the generation is what? 70 years and if they survived to 80 they did it through tribulation right through strength it says and which means through tribulation and sorrow and pain it's just it, it, it it's incredible what it says in fact let's prove that revelation chapter 6 let's even prove a little bit more with this red horse rider okay because he gave them a great sword that they should kill one another, right? So, so what does it mean? To kill one another is what? Nation against nation killing one another. It is the red horse rider. It's the beginning of the 14 years. And it starts with Jerusalem when peace, the Holy Ghost, is left. So let's go to Zechariah. We know 14 years for 14 chapters. That's why at the beginning of the 14th chapter is when the Lord returns after 13 years, uh, uh, in the, after six years of trumpets, he's feet down on the Mount of Olives. <clears throat> what happens if you go to chapter eight, which is the beginning of trumpets, when he's there now on heavenly Mount Zion, he came down on the, on the mountain carved without hand. And look at what he says. They're now going to build the temple. Let your hands be strong. They're now going to start building the temple, the city, and the streets, and the walls. But listen to verse 10 carefully. For before these days, there was no hire for man, nor any hire for beast. Neither was there any peace. Because the peace left at the beginning of the 14 years. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For what? For I set all men, everyone, against his neighbor. Nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. People against people. Neighbor against neighbor. If you haven't grasped that yet, it is the beginning of the 14 years at the Red Horse Rider. The beginning of of Mark's discourse as well as Matthew's discourse. Because remember, once they're destroyed, they're removed, right? This is the beginning of the 14 years. Luke's is the above 14 years. You see, the white horse rider, Okay, in fact, let me jump to this one right here. Since we're on the white horse rider, let's now, or in, uh, in the seals in chapter six of Revelation, <clears throat> if this red horse rider is the end of 50 days and the start of the 14 years, then let's see what we can learn about the white horse rider. You've now seen after seven and then the eight days starts the 40, and then not many days, right? And it's the three to the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost is gone, bang, the 14 years begins right before it. Those three days, the compassing about had taken place. I mean, it, it, come on. So you can see now that the Son of Man is here for 40 days. So do you think if there's a white horse rider that comes first and he's given a bow and a crown and conquering, do you think maybe we can figure that one out? Let's go have a look. What was he given? A crown was given unto him. Well, this is pretty wild. A crown was given unto him. Do you know if we go to Song of Solomon, chapter 3, the very last verse, 
Listen to this. Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 11. Go forth, O you daughters of Zion, and behold King Solomon with the crown wherewith his mother crowned him in the day of his espousals. What? He's being crowned by his mother in the day of his espousals. Okay? In the day of his what? At the time of his wedding. So there's a there's a place where he had received a crown first. When do we know the wedding takes place? <clears throat> we know the escape happens, right? He breathes on the on the uh, apostles, and then he's gone until the eighth day. We know the wedding is seven days long. And what does the wedding, when does it start? Well, what did he start with doing? Yes, the escape happened, but then what did he do? He anointed the apostles. And this begins now, the end of days, the, excuse me, the above 14 years. Okay, this is now, what was is past, what is is over, and it's now the beginning of the is to come right here on day one of the 50. Okay? But now what was and what is is all about to replay in the is to come. What did we have with Solomon? Right? Solomon and Christ, right? A greater than Solomon is here. So we have this typology with Solomon and Christ. And we know from Song of Solomon and the wedding and the bride and connected to the Gentile bride and all of that. So in the day that he was given a crown by his mother in the day of his espousals, that will take place on day one on wedding day. Okay? Wedding week, I should say. But what starts wedding week? It's the beginning of the 50. What is the beginning of the 50. Watch this. It's from the Ministry Revealed book. Okay? These are the seven stages or the seven portions, right, of church history and the is to come. So what do we have? We have the Old Testament, what was. We have the New Testament that we're still in right at the very late stage of Laodicea. Okay? This is the is. And, of course, the seven churches and their descriptions is the is to come. We've revealed the revelation of the seven churches in the is to come. It's in the book and it's in the video, uh, in one of the videos in the description. So what do we have? Ephesus, represented Ephesus, the church of Ephes Ephesus, is the apostolic church. Do you know what that means? He begins by anointing the apostles. When does this start? <clears throat> Day one of 50, when he what? Like John chapter 20, when he breathed on the apostles at the beginning of 50. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's the beginning of the apostolic age starting. The escape has happened. These guys are breathed on and the new apostolic age has begun. What is taking place during this start of this represented Ephesus, church of Ephesus? Now, the apostles are going to remain definitely through all of seals at least, okay? But their represented portion is the first week. And look at what it's called from the Old Testament. The day of Israel's espousals. What did we just read in Song of Solomon 3.11? That he was given a crown by his mother <coughs> in the day of his espousals? He was given a crown by his mother in the day of his espousals. And when we come to Revelation chapter 6, we could see that he had been given a crown. See, and a crown was given, past tense. A crown had already been given to him. When do you think it was given to him? During the seven-day wedding week before he came as the white horse rider, as the son of man. Some people say, well, if if the lamb broke the first seal, how can he be how can he be the white horse rider and break the second seal? 
because he's gone back to heaven after 40 days and the second seal isn't broken until what? After three more days. That's how he does it. They're not all broken, just brrr, the whole thing's broken. White horse, 40 days, then he's gone back for three, and then the second seal is broken when he's back there. And what was he given? A crown. When is he given a crown? At his wedding during the time of his espousals. When did it happen? During the first seven days before the 40 days started. It's literally <clears throat> the story in the revelation of the seven churches and in everything else we've revealed on how the, 40 day, uh, the 50 days play out. <clears throat> it's right there. You see, remember when I said that after the seven days of the wedding week, the espouses him getting his crown, then begins the 40 days. And the 40 days are represented by the Luke 24 disciple group that I said I believe are 12,000 and 12,000 as represented as the two on the road to Emmaus. Remember when I said I don't believe that that persecution in Luke 24 begins right away on day one of the 50. I believe it will begin at the start of the 40 days when he returns after the wedding on the eighth day. And look at what Smyrna tells us. Smyrna is represented by the beginning. This is the remnant worker bride. This is the one represented by the Luke group. And, the, uh, and it starts at day one of 40, which is the eighth day after the wedding. They also remain at least during seals. And it would appear that some will go, that survive will go right through to the end, not only of seals, but might even go right to the end of trumpets. It's appearing that way, okay? Well, look at what happens. The Church of the Roman Persecution. Now, this is going to be Arab this time, right? So you had also a, a was, which was when the wanderings began, and you have the is, which began persecution. It wasn't all the beheadings and all the killings necessarily right away, but there were some killings and, of course, prison and so forth. Well, what does Smyrna represent? The beginning of 40 days. So what was the Luke but first or but before all these things it's the start of the 40 days and there would be imprisonment and persecution and so forth so this is telling us it's proving to us it's showing us that indeed luke 24 but before all these isn't at the start of the 50 but at the time of the beginning of the 40 when the son of man is here so Look at how Ephesus starts. It's the espousals. And we even have his crown. <clears throat> Hello. He was given a bow, right? Simple as fabric, going, conquering, and to conquer. You see, we see as in travail. Well, you know what happens? You know what that brings us to? You can see it in Revelation chapter 12. In Revelation chapter 12, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. We're going to talk a little bit more about this as well. There appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman being clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, a crown of 12 stars. And then it says, so there's something about this thing, this great wonder that's literally, I believe Revelation 12 was just to get people watching back in 2017. This is going to be an actual thing seen, and I believe it's directly related to the meteor, the stone's throw that's coming that we're going to talk about still as well. All of this is what's connected to the beginning of the 50 days, to the above 14 years. So I believe all of us are going to see this coming, but then the escape is going to happen between the end of verse 1 and the start of verse 2. So before this stone, this, this stone's throw hits, the bride will be gone. The 50 days will begin. So when are we going to see this stone's throw? That's an interesting thought. You know, we may even see it around the 1st to the 2nd of April. Okay? Interesting because the 1st of April, yes, it's April Fool's, and we know what it meant historically as the beginning of the year and why it was April Fool's and the fish and everything else. But we also know that 
um, uh, April Fool's is actually the 10th of Nisan when the lamb is to be prepared, right? When they would bring the lamb into their home and it's the time to prepare. So it would be very interesting and it wouldn't surprise me if we may, I'm not saying we will, but if we may, it may not be the first, maybe it's the between the first and the third or fourth of, of uh, April that we would see this stone's throw, okay, a meteor. And that before it hits, the bride will be gone. And how do we know this? Well, we saw this word for travail, but listen to what it says in verse two. And she being with child cried, okay, cried travailing in birth. Listen to this, travailing in birth, okay? And pain to be delivered, watch this. Let's go to Mark 13. And in Mark 13, see, these are the beginnings of sorrows. See, 5604. It's all connected to this travail and then the pain. All of this is the beginning of tribulation. Okay? But now watch this. In Revelation chapter 12, it says, uh, and she being with child uh, cried, travailing in birth, comma, and pained to be delivered. Okay, I know we just recently shared this in a video, but I want everybody to see it in this one because it's all part of the above 14 years. In Isaiah 66, verse 7, it says, before, we're seeing a lot of that, aren't we? Before, above, but first. Before she travailed. Well, we just saw the first thing to happen in, in, chap, in Revelation chapter 12, verse 2 is travail. So before she travailed, she brought forth. What do you think that means? That means even before the 40 days of the Son of Man, she brought forth. Hello. Before the 40 days of the Son of Man, which represents travailing, she brought forth. You see? What, is, what does it represent? It represents, just like Paul said, related to the Luke portion of the pre-trib, that was what? As one born out of due time. So there was no travailing. It was like a, it was like a, a, a pre-born baby, a premature baby came early. There was no travail or anything. So before the travailing, she brought forth. And then look at this, before her pain, which means during the travailing, but before the pain, she was delivered of a man-child. Who is that man-child? It's the representation of the Son of Man here for 40 days. Look at this. So before she travailed. So before the travailing begins, the pre-trib bride's got to be gone which also means be during the travailing is the representation of the Son of Man being here for 40 days. Because the travailing, it said, it said travailing, and it said that before the pain came. Well, the pain is what follows next. So before the pain, which means during the travailing part, is when the Son of Man is here for 40 days. Which means the pain is representative of the pains and sorrows and travail and everything that Mark's group, that the 14 years in the tribulation group is all about to experience. Because they're not only going to experience being here for the 40 days, they're also going to be here for the pain to be delivered, which represents the first two and a half years of seals of World War III before the next sign which is when Antichrist will get his power to continue for 42 months to the end of the sixth seal, a third of the stars. And then what do you see? After the sixth year of seals, the man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up. This is your second Corinthians chapter 12, I think verse four, the was caught up. This is Revelation chapter seven between the sixth and the seventh seal, in the seventh year of seals, the was caught up great multitude rapture. 
But there is a before the travailing that takes place. And Isaiah was the clue. So here it is again. Over and over and over. I told you guys. It's everywhere. The Son of Man is going to be here for 40 days first. All right? Look at it. Okay? The day of his espousals. He receives a crown at the time of his wedding. It's during the wedding week after he anointed the apostles. He returns on the eighth day to start the 40 days and the persecution begins. They follow him as the son of man for 40 days. Jerusalem is warned. I mean, my goodness. It becomes abundantly clear. <clears throat> Now watch this. Check this out. In, where do I want to go? The story that we have with Ephesus, okay? We know that there's a connection also to what we call the stone's throw, right? So we know that there's a connection to this period of time of the stone's throw. I was explaining to you here in Revelation chapter 12, 1, that this wonder is going to be seen. But I do not believe that when this wonder is seen, I don't believe it's going to hit while the bride is here. <clears throat> in fact, let's have a look at Luke 21 again. You see, in Luke 21, we see in relation to the coming of the Son of Man, it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Hello. What did Revelation 12, 1 say? Sun, moon, and stars. Correct. And upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring. <laughs> okay, chaos. Things are starting to, to go a little bit crazy on the earth. Men's hearts start failing them for fear of looking after those things that are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and with great glory. Who's going to see him? You see, I was torn in the past whether this was the, the only the, the remnant worker bride that would see him coming to start his 40 days or whether this is him coming to remove, right, to, to get his pre-trib bride. I believe it's got to be the pre-trib bride, which means we're going to see this first, which lines up with Revelation chapter 12, seeing that sign coming first before right before the escape because listen to what it says and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh okay it's the deliverance of these people he's coming to deliver those who are upon the earth right here when the most high will deliver those okay that pre-trib those who are in christ Spirit filled, he's coming to deliver those who are upon the earth. Which means we should expect to see this. We're looking for a stone's throw to be seen, but not experience the effect of it hitting. So when we were saying here in the, in the context of when it's going to come, we'd be looking at somewhere between here to like here. Somewhere in this range, and we're talking about a week or so, that we may be witnessing this come. I think it's probably most likely going to be somewhere, you know, like this range right in here, right? Maybe around here. But we might start to hear whispers of something being seen by this Saturday. Watch this. So we see that Revelation 12, 1 portion comes first. Okay. And 
we see Luke 21 telling us that this is happening and then we'll see him coming in the clouds, which would be connected to the escape for us. Okay. So when this happens, we're going to see this coming. Well, now knowing what we know about it not being connected with a 50 to the new year trees, not being connected with a 50 <coughs> to, to Tishri, but actually being connected from the resurrection to, to the Feast of Weeks, then it's starting to make a lot more sense why Luke 22, which is right before Passover or after they've had the meal, why he talks about being a stone's throw away. We've shared on this and we've done a number of videos over the years about this. Only in Luke's gospel do you see this conversation of him talking about being a stone's throw away? Isn't it strange? He knelt down to pray, and you see the story in, in various ways in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And only in Luke's. Again, there's never a condemnation to this group, right? This is the disciple worker group as well. But listen to what it says. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast or a stone's throw away. It's only used one time. Why on earth do we have this one little saying here that he was a stone's throw away? We know what it means. We've revealed this prophecy because it is prophecy revealed in the Gospels. This is the Revelation 12.1 sign. This is the the Luke 21, men's hearts failing them. But what did he say? When you see these things begin to come to pass, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption is at hand. And when does this happen? Right before he's taken into the hands of sinful men. This begins. According to this, this is why I say maybe there's something here because the 10th is when they bring in the lamb to prepare it. However, when this happened, it was right in here. It was right in this range right here. Okay? Right in this range was where this conversation of him saying he was a stone's throw away would take place. What's a stone's throw away? It means I'm not too far. I'm, I'm on my way. I'm just a stone's throw away. And it just so happens Luke 21 is saying that men's hearts are going to fail them and, and turbulence and chaos is going to start breaking out. But all you got to do is look up because your redemption's at hand. I'm only a stone's throw away. Isn't he the stone, right, that the builders refused? is now become the headstone of the corner? Do you know that if we go into Psalms, this was just, again, recently shared with me. I remember seeing this a long time ago. But do you know Psalms 18? Again, Psalms 18 and Psalms 118 are connected to the beginning of this 50-day period of time. You see, compassed me about, they've rejected me, the Lord saved me, right? And what does it say? Verse 18, the stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. Isn't that interesting? Because this is representative of the first seven days, of that beginning of the 50 days during that week. We discussed this many times and showed the clarity of the events that take place during the first seven days. And we showed it from Psalms 18, again, like Hosea, like Zechariah, like John, these chapters to years right here. These are the events taking place during that week. Because why? When the stone lands and the chaos and stuff, right? And this chaos breaks out. <clears throat> look at the waters. The foundations of the earth are going to be seen. It's going to be chaos. 
He's going to rescue a group when he comes on the eighth day. He's going to reward them according to the cleanness of their hands. These are the workers. He's going to give them strength. He's going to be their light in the darkness. He's going to enlighten them. He's going to give them his light. Hello. And that's why these guys are going to have power. Because it's for the power of the end of days. But you know what's interesting is we know, you know, 18 is the same, but so is 118 in the chapters to years, the same way as the others are. Do you know that 117 is the middle of the Bible? Like the end and the beginning? Isn't that wild? So you can look at this like being the big, the very beginning, the escape at the start of the 50 days before the destruction, the chaos that starts after the escape of the bride. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. For his, for his merciful kindness is great toward us and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise ye the Lord. The shortest chapter in the Bible and it's the dividing verse or the dividing chapter of the entire Bible of 66 books. Isn't that wild? Because 118, as we have taught, begins the chaos after the escape pretty wild, isn't it? Just another one of those things. Just another little piece tied into this. Well, don't forget, once the anointing of the Holy, uh, uh, of the um, breathed on anointing of the Holy Ghost by Jesus on the, on the apostles takes place, the 50 days will have begun. And this is represented by the first seven days, right? During the wedding, and this is represented by the beginning of the 40 days, even though they both remain during seals at least. This Ephesus, which we have shown, is connected to the stone's throw, <clears throat> excuse me, to the stone's throw, which is why it's interesting that it's only in Luke and that the bride would also, or yeah, everybody would see it coming. We have this stone's cast, right? The stone's throw. And what happens in 23? Again, it goes to the crucifixion story. And then it goes to the resurrection story. You see? Connected to the 14, uh, uh, the 50 days. And in particular, the events of its chaos and its hitting is going to be during the seven days. You want to know what's wild about that? When it hits, it's connected to the time of Ephesus, the church of Ephesus, the beginning of the new apostolic age. And do you know what? You guys will remember this that have been around for a while. Uh, is it Acts chapter 19? It's about Ephesus. And what did Ephesus do? Ephesus worshipped. They made a, a shrine. They made a, a, an image, right? Of the goddess Diana. Okay? They made an image of the goddess Diana. Okay? The great goddess Diana of the Ephesians. Remember, the church of Ephesus. And what did they do? What did they make it from? Acts 19.35. Um, it says of Ephesus, halfway through, how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter. So what happened? Do you know what happened? They're worshiping a goddess from a, a thing that fell from the heavens. It was a meteor that they fashioned into this goddess Diana, which is, sounds very much like what? Revelation chapter 12, 1, with a great wonder, which is a woman, which is the sign of the sun, the moon, and the stars, just as Luke 21 
and it's represented as a woman. And this is going to take place seen before we go. But wow, the seven days of the wedding is taking place is when it hits. And when is it? During the week connected to the apostolic age beginning, which is the church of Ephesus. And the church of Ephesus made an image of a goddess Diana that fell from above, which was a meteorite. Do you guys remember this story? The shrine to goddess Artemis, which was also Diana. Listen to this. The shrine, da, 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 da. here it is. That earliest temple contained a sacred stone, probably a meteorite that had fallen from Jupiter. This goddess Diana that they made, that the Ephesians in the time were worshiping, was all of these little breast-looking things because it was for fertility. She was carved and resembled. That's like a meteorite that has all these bumps on it because Ephesus was struck by a meteorite and christ is saying he is a stone's throw away and the chaos will begin when the stone hits during the seven days represented it during the time of ephesus do you know nothing that i've said is made up do you know nothing is just blown out my butt I'm walking through scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture to show you the entire storyline. Every single part and piece is related to the beginning of the 50 days, to the above 14 years. It's absolutely mind blowing. It's absolutely over the top incredible. I'm getting close. I'm not quite done yet, but I'm close. Watch this. Let me show you something that is, when I saw this shared in the forum, I, I almost lost it. Because what's, what he talks about in this video, I'm just gonna show you a little clip. What he shares in this video is exactly what we've been talking about here in this ministry that the church has been saying for that I've been saying the church does for four plus years. They believe and they are going to believe that the Son of Man, as he said, he is going to be rejected of this generation. We know the reason he's going to be rejected is because the entire church has been taught that Antichrist comes first. I'm going to show you a video from somebody who's very influential with hundreds of thousands of people listening to him, agreeing with the imam of who the Dajjal is. I almost lost it when I saw this. This is why it is 100% absolute unequivocal. The reason why in Luke 17, Jesus said, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation because they will all think that he is the Antichrist. You see, we've taught on this in the past, right? We've proven this. You have the Muslims in their, what is it, their Hadith, something like that, right? They're kind of like our Apocrypha books, okay? Not their main book, but in their Apocrypha type book. They have a guy called Al Masi Ad Dajjal, or the Dajjal. This Dajjal, they call, his name means Deceitful Messiah. Listen to what they call him. Dajjal, from the root of Dajjal meaning deceptive or liar, it means deceiver, 
a compound of sassy dajal refers to the deceiving messiah a specific end time deceiver okay the dajal is an evil being who will seek to impersonate the true messiah jesus this is the jews i mean this is the arabs guys the muslims sorry they say listen to this the dajjal is not mentioned in the quran but uh is but he is mentioned and described in the hadith literature listen to this like in christianity christianity the dajjal is said to emerge out of the east although the specific location varies among various sources the dajjal will imitate the miracles performed by jesus such as healing the sick and raising the dead the latter one done by the aid of de devils we will uh, he will deceive many people such as weavers magicians right uh children of fornication they go on to say that he is the christian antichrist and do you know that virtually every christian on earth is in agreement and they don't know it i'm going to show you a video clip of a very well-known guy who literally agreed with this that the end time dajjal deceiver a christian has agreed that he is the antichrist coming so you've got the muslims and christians in agreement so that when the son of man comes for 40 days as the white horse rider when he comes as the 40 days as the son of man and he's doing miracles and signs and wonders and he's warning as jonah did the world is going to reject him because they are expecting the antichrist first and the muslims through satan were forewarned that this guy would come first do you want to know how long he's coming for for those that are new are you ready for this some sunni muslims have affirmed that the dajjal is an individual man and that when the dajjal appears he will stay for 40 days hello he will stay for 40 days. Listen to this. Uh, some would say Constantinople. And the conquest of Constantinople, when the Dajjal, listen to this, Antichrist, comes forth. They have convinced Christians, even though Christians don't know it, most of them, that this Dajjal is Antichrist. And do you know why Christians side with it? Because they have no idea that the son of man is coming for 40 days first they have no idea that when the muslims talk about the dajjal they're talking about somebody only coming for 40 days whereas christians and their antichrists know that he's here for at least the connected when he gets his power to continue for 42 months and not 40 days do you know how unbelievable that is to hear that? Listen to what you're going to hear here. So from about 425 to 617, listen to this. This right here, I just just as I was doing the research on these different things there, I came across this video here uh, from Umran TV, the English version here, uh, how could Israel rule the world and take over USA and China? Uh, I think it's kind of interesting some of the things that this, uh, this Muslim uh, uh, cleric says. So I want to play a clip of that for you just so you can hear that as well. So let's listen in. Uh, rule the world. Uh, that is uh, take over the US. Uh, if China is the second largest uh, economy now in the world. It is the child who wants to rule the world. Okay, so he says, it is Dajjal who wants to rule the word, the world. 
Now, Stephen Bendenu, he doesn't know how to say the word that he said, but he just said it is Dajjal that wants to rule the world. Listen to this. The false messiah. And he's taking the Jews for a ride. And it's the last ride on which they ever go. Most of them, unfortunately, have eyes and yet cannot see. So just like most Muslims as well, they have eyes and yet cannot see. He wants to rule the world. And he wants to rule the world and then hand over that rule to the Jews, meaning to the state of Israel, not to those Jews who oppose Israel. The most so the Dajjal wants to come, have rule over the world, and give that rule to the Jews in Israel. Important part of his plan. I, I want you to notice some of the things that he says. I, I actually am amazed. <laughs> I want you to notice some of the things that are going to come out of his mouth. The most important part of his plan. I, I want you to notice some of the things that he says. I, I actually am amazed at uh, his accuracy and what he says, but... What? What? I'm amazed at the accuracy of what he's saying. He's talking about the Antichrist. Uh... Bam! He's talking about the Antichrist. No, he is not Stephen Bendenoon. You need to wake up. You need to listen. I, I, I pray the Spirit would reveal these things to you, would bring you to this ministry, would send you these clips. He's talking about the Dajjal. He's talking about the Son of Man who's coming for 40 days. And you're perpetuating his Antichrist, his actual Antichrist who's coming after the Dajjal. The Dajjal is not the Antichrist. Do your study. Uh, the false messiah. I guess that's the term. I, I can't quite hear how he pronounces that word there, but uh, he's speaking about that. And uh, no, But isn't. then he talks about that the basically the Antichrist wants to take over the world and then hand it over to the Jews. And he said, but he doesn't want to hand it over to those Jews that oppose basically what's happening in Israel, but rather handing it over to uh, those Jews that are, well, craziness. You see, I have taught you guys that this is exactly what Christians are going to do. They've been doing it forever and they don't even know it. You see, I told you I'm going to pop a blood vessel on the side of my head. This is what I'm telling you. This is what we're trying to wake up the world to. But we know whoever those are who are going to remain to work as his remnant bride, Smyrna group, Luke group. This is what we're going to deal with. This is why there's going to be the persecution and the death against some of them. Stephen has no idea that he has just sided with a Muslim cleric on who the Antichrist is. This. I told you is absolutely 100% unequivocally why the Messiah said, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Told you. The Son of Man is the white horse rider. He has received his crown from his wedding that happened the week prior to his coming that one week and then his coming to be the son of man who they will claim is the jail because satan has already deceived them ahead of time so that when he comes they would they wouldn't fall into accepting him and the christians have no idea that the son of man is coming for 40 days first because satan has deceived the church and hidden these things from them they will side against Messiah. And the church has no idea. I got to move on from this video. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to explode. It's unbelievable. You see, now let's, now let's bring it into some, some fun pieces. Okay? Let's bring it back into the wedding story. Okay? And then we're going to finish this up with this with this Aleph and Tav, beginning and end, okay? 
This is the typology, healing the man on the Sabbath. This is like a typology, the pre-trib escape. This is the wedding. We've shared on this a number of times lately. The wedding feast story is in Luke. It is not in Mark. And it is in Matthew. In Matthew, it's because there's two. There's the Gentile bride and the Jewish bride. Okay? We know that. Just like there's a Leah and there's a Rachel. Mark has nothing. Okay? But in Luke's only, first of all, the conversation is different within Luke's and with Matthew's. And it's on purpose. But Luke's is the only one that also has a great banquet after the wedding feast. Okay, this is the wedding that the pre-trib group is going to at the pre-trib escape of day one of 50, which I believe is connected to April 7th this year. Okay, depending where you live on the earth. I believe we're going to see the stones throw first, but not be here for it landing. It will land while this wedding is taking place in heaven and it will be seven days long. When this wedding is over and the Son of Man comes to begin his 40 days, he is going to begin with having a great banquet for those wedding, uh, uh, for those remnant bride workers, the ones from Luke 24, the ones represented as the two on the road to Emmaus, who will have their understanding opened unto them. Those that some of them are going to die, but they will be part of the first resurrection. They are the seals workers. They are the house, or the, I should say the church of Smyrna. This is who he's having this meal with, where he is going to sit with them, serve them, and eat with them. Okay? This is precisely why I was showing you that earlier in Luke chapter 24, because only with this group does Jesus sit down and eat with them and serve them. This is a representation of the end time Smyrna group that will be there with them for the 40 days. This is the group from Luke chapter 12. In Luke chapter 12, when he said, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning and you yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding. And when he cometh and knocketh, you may open unto him immediately. Listen to this. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, he shall gird himself and make them to sit down at to meet and he will come forth and serve them. Wedding, returning from the wedding, sitting down and having a banquet meal with them. The only one that he does that with is that small flock, is that little flock from Luke. The little flock that's going to help bring in the great multitude of the big flock. This is them. They are the little flock worker group. And they're going to help bring in the flock, the whole flock, the rapture group. It's, it's, so, it's so everywhere. It's so understood. It's always been a simple matter of saying, Lord, when is this going to begin? Where is your 70? Where is it going to end? Where are you counting from? And the Lord revealed Feast of Weeks. Feast of Weeks is my year's end and the beginning of the year. Taurus, Aleph, is the beginning. And what was Tav, brothers and sisters? Tav is represented by the cross. When Christ was on the cross and he died and finished it on the cross, what did he say? What did Christ say on the cross? Let's go to John chapter 19. 
Jesus said only in John's that it is finished. Do you know in Luke's, we've talked about this a number of times, right? It's the differences in the Gospels and who they're speaking to. In Luke, he said, Father, into your arms I commend my spirit. That's, that's the pre-trib. That's the bride of Christ taken. In Mark and in Matthew, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken means leave behind. Was Christ left behind? No, of course not. So what was the prophetic understanding? Mark and Matthew's group being left behind. Seals and trumpets. And in John's, he says, it is finished. So what happened in John? Jesus cries out, it is finished. So the cross is what? <clears throat> the cross, whoops. The cross means finished. And Taurus means beginning. But what else means beginning? The resurrection. Was the resurrection not a new beginning? Without the resurrection, if Christ had died on the cross and never resurrected, he wouldn't have been Christ. He could have done all of those things before. But without the resurrection at the new beginning, there would have been no beginning. There, it, he wouldn't have been Christ without the resurrection. So what? remember what I was saying? I was building this on purpose for you guys. The end is the beginning, the beginning of the end. You guys remember that? Gospel of Thomas, right? Yes, it's an apocryphal book, remember? Verse 18, the disciples said to Jesus, listen to this. Tell us how our end will be. Okay, he's talking about the end. Jesus said, have you discovered then the beginning, Taurus, that you look for the end, Tav, the cross? For where the beginning is, there will the end be. Blessed is he who will take his place in the beginning he will know the end and will not experience death. What is this in the prophetic end time understanding? It's the revelation of the beginning and the end. What is the beginning and the end? Well, what do we know about Taurus? This eye is the eye that represents 50, the eye that's the 14th brightest star in the sky. And what did the Jews say about Taurus? To the early Jews, Taurus was the first constellation in their zodiac. Consequently, it represented the first letter in the alphabet, Aleph. <coughs> Let's go look at the Hebrew alphabet. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at this. 11 and 11. There are 22 letters. Okay? Aleph is represented by Taurus, the ox, the head of Taurus. The end is Tav by a mark, by a sign, which is represented by the cross. What are the two beginnings and the two ends? The end of the beginning and the beginning of the end. Just think of that for a moment. Okay? What do you have? A, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Tav is the end. Aleph is the beginning. Right? You have the beginning and the end. And what have I been telling you from the beginning of this video? The last shall be first and the first shall be last. <clears throat> but what is it? They're both a beginning and they're both an end. Because in the beginning it was Taurus. And it ended with Christ on the cross. And at the cross, what did the cross become? He said it was finished. It was over. And the resurrection became what? The new beginning. It was an end and a beginning. And Taurus is what? 
Aleph, the beginning. And in the end of days, Aleph, which is Taurus, which is why the Lord is counting from Pentecost, Shavuot, I mean, a uh, Feast of Weeks, Shavuot, is because Taurus is not only the beginning, but is the beginning of the end. <laughs> Did ponder that. Rewind and watch it. Pause the screen and pay attention. Beginning and end. Taurus and the cross. In the very beginning, at the beginning in Genesis, in the beginning, Jesus was the beginning in the beginning. And what is the beginning? It's Taurus and it's the resurrection. In the beginning, all the way back at the beginning of creation, the very first words of Genesis, it was the Feast of Weeks, Taurus, and it was the time of resurrection. Because what? After the cross was the resurrection, and the resurrection was the new beginning. What was Taurus at the Feast of Weeks? It was the Lord God's beginning. In the beginning, they were both together. When he came and finished it on the cross, which is the Tav, which represents it's done, it's finished, the resurrection was the new beginning. You following? Taurus was the beginning, and the Lord God has never changed because like the face of a clock, the 1 through 12 never changes. It never moves, just like the constellations. They never move. To the Lord God, this has always been the end and the beginning of the year. That's why he could say, even though on the calendar to them, from the first month, second, third, it's still running off the calendar because of Abib. But he could say to them, they observed this for 70 years and that they wouldn't observe it in the 71st or going forward, even though it's in Taurus. You see? Every part and piece is connected and the beginning from John 1 with the two beginnings is the same beginning as Genesis 1 in the beginning because this beginning was Christ at the equivalent resurrection day, which was at the time of the Feast of Weeks. The Lord God has never changed with the constellations, but the sun and the moon have. The sun has moved by two months, but the moon is off by 10 days. So what's the difference? 60 days minus 10 is 50. So what do you get when you go back from the 6th of Savan, the Feast of Weeks? You come to the 16th of Nisan, the new beginning from the Tav, the end and the beginning, to the Lord God's 50th day from the year's end to the beginning of the year. And this beginning is what? The beginning of the end of days. I hope you followed that because it is over the top. The revelation and the connection to understand it is the truth. We're not looking for the fifth to the seventh month. We're not looking for Hanukkah to the feast of the New Year of Trees. We are looking to the Feast of Weeks as a 50-day count similar to like a Pentecost because in the end, the first will be last and the last will be first. 
the difference between the end of the beginning and the beginning of the end is 50 days and its resurrection to the Feast of Weeks because our Lord is called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the Aleph and the Tav. He is the Ox. He is Taurus, the head of Taurus, and he is the cross. The head of Taurus and the cross are divided or separated by 50 days from the resurrection and the new beginning from the cross. Brothers and sisters, it was always the 50 days to be understood from resurrection to Shavuot. The other mysteries were to show attack one to attack two. They were to show the count of the years and that when Christ comes, he's coming as light. Brothers and sisters, as I open this, we know that the 50 days will have a stone's throw. It will have an escape of the pre-trib bride of Christ. It will be a seven-day wedding that will have an attack in northern Israel at the beginning at the escape. During the seven-day wedding in heaven, the stone's throw will land and cause Psalms 18, 118, chaos and destruction. This war that breaks out in northern Israel will be settled, I believe, during this time. When the seven-day wedding is taking place, the remnant bride will be aware and will be girded about and will be praying like crazy for his return at the eighth day, waiting for the knock. The apostles will receive the anointing also on the 50th day and will begin the greatest time of revival in human history in the midst of chaos. When the wedding is over and the Lord returns on the eighth day, he will briefly meet with those apostles and then will meet with those who were returning, who were waiting for him as the remnant bride disciples, as the Smyrna disciples, who will follow him and in following him will begin with him serving them a meal and eating with them wherever this takes place. And the 40 days of the Son of Man will begin. And in those 40 days, there will be persecution against the workers. There will be a, a, a warning taking place. The world will be proclaiming him as Dajjal and Antichrist. While the Muslims are calling him Dajjal, they will side together against him. And those following him will be called and taken before synagogues and, and judges. They will be thrown into prison. Some of them <coughs> will even be put to death as early as all of this. Then the Son of Man will leave having warned Jerusalem that they're about to be compassed about. They will see themselves on the 48th day, begin to be compassed about as Syria, Assad, is indwelled by the raven spirit. He will compass them about. And on the 50th day, the anointing of the Holy Ghost will come upon those disciples who were waiting for the anointing that the Lord had promised them after he had opened their understanding as they were with them. They will receive power and an anointing from the Holy Ghost. They will go out from Jerusalem. And when they do, and the Holy Ghost has returned back to heaven, Assad will attack Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be destroyed. The Jews will flee, many will be killed, many will be taken captive, and the 14 years of tribulation will begin at the end of the 50th day 
at the Feast of Weeks, I believe this year, 2023. And the answer was revealed in the beginning and the beginning that in creation at the very beginning, the two were together and they are, de- are, they are separated now by exactly 50 days, which was the mystery that began it all above 14 years ago. Brothers and sisters, there was not a blip. There was not a glitch. There wasn't a stutter, a misstep. This was the revelation of the above 14 years. And I believe it is going to happen this year, 2023, Resurrection Day. So eyes up, watch, pray, be repentant, love your brothers and sisters, pick each other up, strengthen each other, do what you can, spread the word, and help these sleeping Christians to know the truth of who the Son of Man is about to be. Brothers and sisters, I pray this blesses you. I pray this strengthens you and everybody else who watches, who discerns, who studies it, who takes the time. We are here and the above has been revealed. God bless you. God bless your families. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.